everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. If um, you guys can let me know how the volume sounds real quick, just set. doing this a couple minutes early so I can make sure we're good to go. Let me know how the volume sounds real quick, just set. doing this a couple minutes early. So okay, looks like we're good. All right, thanks for joining, guys. Let me see if I can add in. Hey, Roy. Hey, Charlie, can you hear my mic? Let's see here. Hold on, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, here, let me make sure that... Hold on, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool, I think that's good. Um, yeah, sorry, actually, I already started the broadcast. I did that in the opposite order. So we're, we are on right now, but okay. I don't know when's, um, there's one or two people on here, but we're a few minutes early. But yeah, if I go offline, then it'll end in. I'd have to do a new link and stuff. So, Oh, no problem. Um, How's it going? <laughs> what have you been up to today? Uh, let's see. Not much. Just pretty much, I don't know, just doing some work. I don't know. It's kind of a weird day because I think a lot of people are like off for the holiday, but I wasn't really sure, you know? Yeah. Hey, the real hustlers are always working. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, what about I, you? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, before I hopped on here, I just got back from uh, another local client, and that was my third follow-up with them, and we finally closed the deal today. Nice. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So we could talk about that a little bit too afterwards. That was actually uh, from a lead that um, my friend got me. So. I can't say that I take full credit for going in there and get, getting the lead myself, but uh, I definitely did my uh, fair share of work to continue following yeah. up to get the deal. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what kind of business was it? Um, it's actually a restaurant, but they're a nonprofit organization, and they got um, a Google ad grant for like $10,000 a month ad spend. Uh, for nonprofits and they needed someone to rebuild their website, do some video editing and manage their ads. So we were able to close a deal with them for, um, uh, I think for the web design, it was $2,500. Okay. And nice. for the, uh, ad, uh, campaign management, it was, um, 2000 bucks to set it up and $1,500 a month to manage it. Okay. Wow. So it's a pretty good deal, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So how long did that take, like from start to finish? Oh man. Um in total, probably two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And that was great. like that was like going in there uh for the first meeting, kind of doing a exploratory session where I uh took notes on everything that they wanted to do and accomplish, uh taking a look at what their existing uh, website looked like, what their existing campaign was, how it was performing, and then uh, going home, putting together a proposal, figuring out um, who I would need to work with to accomplish everything in a timely fashion, and uh, going back, showing them the initial proposal, getting denied, going yeah. back home, <laughs> redoing the proposal, going back in, making changes again, and then finally coming to an agreement. Right. So... But we uh, we came to an agreement today, and really, I was um, the whole time I was like, "Man, how do I close him?" And because he just kept talking about how, "Oh, you know, well, what if you guys do it for free and we pay you after and this and that?" And I was like, I was "Like, listen, as much as I would love to, you know, really demonstrate that this can work, like we need some money up front." So yeah. We kind of worked a deal where you know they they don't pay a hundred percent upfront, but they give us enough to uh, get started, so it makes everyone's time worthwhile. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I like that. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, hold on, let me. I'm sending out a, a message real quick to some people too, so they can join. Um, sure. But yeah, that'll be good to kind of talk about once we actually get going for real. But yeah, I think like a, I mean, a big thing that I always try to talk about is 
like just having a realistic timeline of of what um oh, I, mean, yeah. I feel like people just give up too easily on deals you know yeah if it's like an initial no then it's like ah well they just you know bad prospect or whatever <laughs> um, right i think a lot of people actually um like you said they give up too early because you know in the last uh couple weeks i mean i've had really high um close rates with people i mean i i think i had like really high three rate. solid prospects and i closed two of them yeah so you know i obviously i guess it comes down to the prospecting like um i walked into um a business that was in business from like 1997 they registered their domain in 1996 and their website was absolute garbage they'd been you know paying rent at this place for like 20 years yeah. and i went in there and this guy like you know comes up to me I'm like hey man um i i brought in these glasses because and, and we'll get into this i don't know if we've actually started the uh official stream yet but uh um, no, that's okay now I'll, I'll give you like a real intro okay <laughs> but um i came in you know i, I try to uh pretend like I'm shopping around first and then like I throw out, Hey, you know, like I saw your website was all messed up. Um, so I came in with my glasses and I, I told them, I said, Hey, you know, like my glasses are a little unbalanced or something like that. So I, I got them talking to me for a little bit. And then, um, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I actually went on your website to see if you guys had like a service for that. And I noticed it was all like messed up and they're like, Oh yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I, this is what I uh, do for a living. Like I can uh, help you guys out if you're interested. And they're like, no, we're good. And I was like, but you can, they're like, no, we're, we're okay. You know, yeah. like, you know, some people just shut you down hard. Oh, so that was one where it didn't, didn't end up working out. Yeah. I, but you know, another um, potential reason why is I think I went in there when they were a little bit too busy. Yeah. So some people will be nice and just like, let you know, Hey, can you come in another time? We're a little busy. Um, I'm sure, you know, maybe if I followed up with them and said, Hey, listen, I know you guys said no the first time, but I've got a deal that you can't refuse or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, I think, yeah, that's like a huge thing that I kind of try to talk about. Cause if you like approach someone just because you approach them right then, it's probably not, they, they don't really care in that moment. Right. Just cause that's just because you happen to approach them on a certain day doesn't mean they're like open to whatever you sell, but they probably do right. need it at some point. Yeah. So you got to structure it so that you're not like burning the bridge if they say no or whatever. Cause I think some people get too aggressive and then it's like, yeah, they're never going to buy for you then, but right. at least make a positive impression that, you know, I'm sure at some point they will probably want to fix that. So mm -hmm. how can you actually set it up so that when they do that, when they do fix their, their website or whatever, you're the person they actually think of and you know, they contact you first and then it's an easier sell at that point. Right. But I mean, did you do anything like, did you kind of give them your info or is that kind of the end of the discussion or? Yeah, that was the end of the discussion. I think maybe if I was pushing a little bit harder, I could have left um, like a business card or a phone number. Um, another tip that I got um, from a marketing person was um, to like leave them some kind of uh, whether it be a brochure or like a, a printout of what it is that I do. So if I was like trying to sell them SEO, um, I could give them like a case study maybe for a similar business and then they can read it over and see like, oh, wow, you know, maybe this does have some um, potential return on investment. Yeah. But, um, you know, I just wanted to go get started and just go out and like talk to businesses. I didn't want to spend any more time like putting together printouts and this and that. I was just like, you know what, let's just go do it. And yeah. uh, it worked. So that's actually yeah. like one of the things I wrote down too is, you know, we'll talk about what do you need to go get started? Right. Yeah. And even then it's like, you don't really need to bring anything with you. I feel like you could also just reach out to them afterwards. Like probably yeah. some way yeah. to reach them like email or whatever. Um, yeah. I think we have a few people in here now. It'll be interesting to see how many people actually join based on the holiday, but I feel like a lot of people are also just working or yeah, you know, hanging out anyway. So yeah, for those that are you, uh, those of you that are in here, I got Roy with me. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel also, so I link that. That's the first comment there. So guys, check his channel out. He does. Well, let you do a summary, but you do Shopify SEO. Yeah, uh, we're so gonna be talking today about how he started his marketing agency, some sales, and then at least uh, two instances of him just going door to door and getting new clients. So 
but yeah, you go ahead and give a summary in your own sure. words. All right. Well, thanks, Charlie. Um, so my name is Roy Goldstein. I run uh, SerpStorm.com. It's a Shopify uh, marketing and SEO uh, agency. And I specialize in getting higher conversion rates on Shopify stores and bringing in more organic traffic. So uh, if anyone has a Shopify store or thinking about getting into Shopify, check out some of the videos on my channel. If uh, you have a request for some information that you'd like to um, have a video made on, leave a comment and uh, I'll get back to you and um, hopefully get a video pumped out in the next couple of days for you. Nice. Yeah, and I think that's actually a good question. I don't know if you can see the questions on your end. Um, Let's see. But yeah, James asked, door-to-door -door for a Shopify client. And I guess that's a good point to go over. I don't think you only do Shopify, right? I mean, you're looking for businesses that have some sort of e-commerce component, right? Yeah, so, you know, that's that's a good, good question as well is um, when you start your first um, company and you niche down quite heavily, like for example, um, I niche down into e-commerce and then even more so into Shopify and even more so than that, focusing on SEO. So right now I'm not really dealing with doing like ads for e-commerce companies. I don't deal with um, like email marketing as much as I would like to get into that stuff. Um, so, uh, also not having like a side job, <laughs> you know, that's just my only source of income. I used to do a lot of web development and graphic design. So by me going door to door for sales, I mean, I'm looking for any kind of work, whether they need, um, local SEO or just overall web development, even if they need some brochures designed, I mean, whatever it is, just going door to door, seeing what people need and seeing if it's a service that I can fulfill. Yeah. So yeah, James, uh, for the door to door on the Shopify clients, it wasn't, uh, I didn't actually go out specifically looking for, um, Shopify clients. I just wanted to go out and see if I could get, uh, maybe some local SEO clients or find someone that wants, uh, their website revamped. But, uh, I actually happened to get lucky with the store that I walked into because they told me, they said, Hey, we really want to start selling our products online and they were doing it on Wix right now. And Wix is like an awful, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say awful website platform, but very, very hard to customize it past a certain point. So I actually convinced this client to go with Shopify and they were uh, pretty happy with that decision. So, um, nice. Yeah, I guess it actually worked out pretty well that they uh, wanted to get a head start on their e-commerce sales, especially coming up for um, the spring and summer. And um, yeah, I convinced them to get off Wix and go on to Shopify. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's and that's something we should talk about too is like, well, so Roy and I were talking about this last week is kind of like, I mean, you obviously have to have some sort of balance between building the business, like specializing in a certain few things, but also when you're starting, if you need money, you know, like you just take on whatever project, like you take on, I mean, not whatever, but like anything that's in digital marketing. And obviously it's kind of unrealistic to really grow something if you're offering, you know, every single service and it's just you or you and one other person. Um, but I don't know, some people do that too. There's all sorts of like full service marketing agencies that only have a couple people and they have tons of clients, but that's kind of an interesting thing to balance, right? Because yeah, if you go door to door, maybe there's only, even if you hit like a hundred doors, there's only gonna be like two or three people who are actively thinking about, you know, setting up a Shopify site or whatever. But right. you're also gonna have those other like five to 10 people who are thinking about some other related service. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, but yeah, no, first I think it'd be good to like, tell tell people what you did to get that client. So. Yeah. So like the, the one you got last week, what did you actually do? How did you approach <laughs> them? How long did it take to get a deal done? Yeah. So the first thing that you got to do is uh, play a Charlie Light video while you're walking over to, the, to them. <laughs> and I'm serious. Yeah. I was like, I need to, uh, I need to get into the mentality of selling. So I put on one of your videos and I was listening to your calls, kind of how you were going. I was like, okay, I could do this. Um, and that's something uh, I feel like should be addressed first and foremost is the approach anxiety, right? Yeah. Um, everyone is scared of rejection, whether it's like in business or if you're going out to talk to girls, like everyone's scared of getting rejected. So the first thing you need to do is just leave that like anxiety at home and just know that, you know, 
if you need business, you need to go out and do this. I mean, I personally, you know, if I want to pay my bills and pay rent, and eat, I have to do this. So I don't care if the person is going to cuss me out and literally push me out their door. Right. I have to go do this. So, so I, I walked over there. It was right down the street from where I live. And, um, I, the night before, um, when I was, uh, just like walking around, uh, coming home from the gym, I saw their business. I thought that it was a pretty nice looking store. I looked up their website and I realized that their FAQ page still had like the default Wix, um, content on it. Their service page was blank. The, uh, there were like some pictures on there that were messed up. And I thought to myself, you know, this business has a really cool store. They're on like the main street that goes through um, the city that I live in out here in Fort Lauderdale. Th there's got to be something that they need done. So the next day I walked in and I just pretended like, uh, you know, I was shopping around for some flowers. It's by the way, it's a home and garden store. It's called um, Blue Bamboo Home and Garden. Mm -hmm. And, um, I went in there and I, I talked to the guy. It was on a Saturday afternoon around 1 PM. And the first, uh, thing that I did was I said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm Roy. I moved down the street. I'm looking for some uh, plants for my apartment. And he started showing me around. I said, you know, Hey, by the way, um, I saw your store and I wanted to see what you guys had for sale. So when I went on your website, um, I noticed that there was like a ton of blank pages everywhere. And he's like, Oh yeah. You know, I've got a guy, um, working on it for me. And, you know, you could tell he was like scratching his head. Like he probably didn't have a guy working on it. And so I was like, oh man, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure you probably get like a ton of visitors to your website. Um, I could help you out. Uh, that's like what I do for, for a living. And immediately when I said that he kind of got a little bit turned off because he thought that I was like just there to sell him. So I think yeah. he picked up on it. And then like he walked, uh, a way to go help some other customers in the store. And that was another, um, thing too, is the store was a little bit busy when I walked in. So weekends are not pro probably not the best time to go into businesses that, um, kind of, you know, that, that's when people have time to go out and they go to businesses like that. So, uh, that was like, I think mistake number one was just kind of going when it was really busy. So as soon as I said, Oh, you know, I could help you with this. He was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he walked away and I was like, oh, shoot. Like, that's it. It's game over, you know? Yeah. And um, what happened was I kept walking around. I was looking at more plants and I, I kept talking to him about the plants because I didn't want to make it seem like I just came there to sell him. So uh, we talked a little bit more and then, you know, he said, hey, like, I appreciate you coming in. Can I get your number? Um, I'll give you a call because uh, I'm a little bit busy right now. And I was like, okay, sure. So I gave him uh, one of my business cards and actually uh, if you give me a couple seconds, I'll go grab one. I actually have some pretty neat business cards. Uh, and to my surprise, he texted me later that day and he uh, thanked me for coming in. He said that he actually did need some help with his website. And, um, you know, I said, yeah, you know, it was my pleasure coming in. And uh, I texted him back. I said, uh, when would you have time to meet up? And he didn't text me after that for like a, a whole day. So I just took it upon myself. And for anyone watching that is interested in doing the same thing, I recommend you do the same thing. Just go in and follow up within like two days um, because they're still a hot lead. They obviously said that they, they expressed interest that they wanted uh, some kind of service. So I just went in there because he said he wasn't busy on the weekdays. And when I went in, it was totally dead. And, um, from there, that's when, um, I actually started trying to close him. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of had the initial, like you got to, you know, set the hook and then you had the quick follow up. I mean, yeah, if you wait too long, he probably forgets who you are or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah. So how long did it take then? So like you had the intro, you met him, then the meeting was what, like two days later. Yeah. Two days later, the meeting was about an hour long. And what I did for him is I had a, um, a local SEO checklist that I actually got from uh, Chase uh, Reiner. Which oh, yeah. Speaking of that, I got to – let me mute him in the chat being, you know, spamming everyone. <laughs> is he in here? Yeah, do you see him? He just commented. We're all guests in each other's lives. Yeah, what's up, Chase? So, uh, yeah, I, I got to give credit to Chase here. Um, and I did his uh, local SEO checklist. 
Uh, if you guys want that, you should go on his channel and, and grab it. And uh, as soon as I brought it, right, it only takes me like 30 minutes to do. But as soon as I brought it, I was like, hey, you know, I did this check on your site. And so Chase always says, um, you know, businesses uh, would love like getting the checklist. But as soon as I whipped it out, he's like, oh, yeah, I don't care about that. And I was like, all right, cool. So I just put it back in my backpack. But <laughs> I tried to uh, like reiterate some points on there because, you know, business owners, they don't care about technical things. They don't care about um, – they don't care about details like is what you're doing. They just want to know how much does it cost? When are you going to get it done? And am I going to make money from it? So you need to always be whatever you're saying needs to be a means to an end. So throughout the conversation, I felt like I kind of had him on the edge. But uh, what really solidified the deal for me was when I pulled up Ahrefs and if you mm -hmm. uh, anyone watching this right now doesn't know what Ahrefs is. It's um, it's an SEO tool that gives you insights into like keyword difficulty and search volumes. And so when we went over what he wanted to sell online, I opened up my laptop, I went on Ahrefs and I put in all the keywords that he wanted. I showed him, Hey, these are all like zero to four difficulty keywords. You know, we can build your store, get some uh, content published. Um, maybe share it with a couple blogs, get some um, links, whatever it is. And, you know, you could rank and start getting sales from this. As soon as he saw that, he was like, okay, I want to do this. And yeah. so everything I told him about web design, he didn't care. You know, I said, okay, I can make this. I could do it in a week. He's like, all right, that's great. That's great. But how am I actually going to make money? So once I showed him kind of the strategy with the keywords, he was really like curious about it. And then I was able to, um, get a deal with him for um, an initial payment of $1,500 uh, for his website. But he said that he does have a budget of like five to $10,000. So uh, who knows, like maybe this could turn into a potential five to $10,000 deal if he needs like ongoing SEO. You know, if I can prove to him that some of the uh, initial things that I do are bringing him money, he would definitely be willing to invest um, a little bit more into that. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, go. No, you go ahead. You know, that's definitely a, such an underrated thing about sales. It's like it. I mean, the first sale is always the hardest to make, but then right. if you actually just take care of them, you can always sell more services, whatever. Especially, I mean, certain clients aren't like that. Like they'll never have the budget or whatever. But guys like that, I mean, you're but much better off now. Like just putting in real effort, getting that to five or ten thousand dollars a month, rather than trying to go out and get like ten new clients to do the same for or whatever. But um. Right. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. So how many businesses did you approach? Was that like the only one you did that day or do you so like several a day? Yeah. So, um, you know, I just, I don't have a car down here in Fort Lauderdale. Everything's pretty close by. So I was walking around, I probably walked like seven miles throughout the whole day. And, um, I was really trying to go into, um, I was really trying to go into, uh, yacht businesses um, because Fort Lauderdale is like the yacht capital of the world. And of course, Chase, uh, if he's still watching this, he always preaches that you should niche down into something. So I really wanted to get involved with uh, yacht marketing because it's a huge business, uh, specifically in Fort Lauderdale. The keywords are relatively easy to rank for and they're very high ticket um, services. I mean, there's some yacht companies out here that charter yachts for a quarter million dollars a week. So yeah. if you can bring in a lead for them and get, you know, one to 5% of that, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good return on uh, all the work that you do. So throughout the day, uh, I probably walked into five businesses. I remember we had discussed this. I was like, I'm going to go into 25 businesses and talk to them. But the truth is I just could not find 25 businesses that were like, all right, I, I got to go in here. You know, it was all like, um, one like chain or franchise businesses yeah. or, uh, small businesses. There were a couple that I went into and the owner wasn't there and they just asked me to leave a business card. And, um, you know, those, I guess I could follow up with on another day when the owner's there, but, um, yeah, I would, I would walk in, kind of pretend like I was a customer for the first five minutes. And the key is finding something wrong with 
their um, their either their Google My Business listing, their website, or something along the lines of their digital presence. So like their Facebook page or anything that you can find, you have to find something wrong with them. If you can't find anything wrong, odds are that they probably already have a marketing team in place. And I came across a couple of businesses that actually had uh, incredible websites, great Google My Business listings, tons of reviews. And, you know, there's just not a whole lot you can really do for those businesses. Right. Okay, got it. So every time you come in with something specific, like you'd have a suggestion or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they know it because you're pointing out like a pain point to them and you're right there in front of their face saying, yeah, I can fix this in like five days. And uh, that's another point that I just want to stress is always make sure that you emphasize how fast you can do something because people want results quickly. So, uh, you know, the last, the person that I closed today and the uh, blue bamboo, as soon as I mentioned that I could do the website in a week, they were like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. You know? Because you say, oh, yeah, it'll take 30 days, 45 days. You know, I'm outsourcing it to some guy, which I don't. I build it all myself. But uh, people want things quickly. So if it's um, if you can say, hey, you know, I can get this done for you quick, they're like, all right, let's do it. You know, that'll make it worth the money. Right. Okay, yeah. So you, I mean, obviously you want them to be excited about it. If it just sounds like, oh, you know, we'll get to it or whatever, it'll be okay. Then you're not going to close as many deals. Yeah. Um, and so what... What about the other ones? You like just closed a deal today, right? Mm -hmm. So how did that one happen? What was the timing? Um, how did you them? Yeah, so it was a pretty similar process. Um, actually, my friend went into their business and um, you know, they he just was talking to the business owner. The business owner was pretty friendly. And he said, oh, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm in digital marketing. He's like, oh, no way. You know, I've got this uh, grant from Google because we're a nonprofit. Could you help us do it? So he came uh, over to my place and he said, you know, Hey, I've got this guy. He wants this and that. And I knew as soon as he said that, I said, all right, like we got to act quick on this because, you know, he probably wasn't going to put, take the time to make a professional proposal. So I put together a very professional proposal. Um, and before I did that, obviously I, I just scheduled a meeting with them. And both of us went over there in the morning, sat down with them for about half an hour and just talked about um, what their goals were. So it basically went, um, you know, one, uh, get their interest uh, to schedule a like exploratory meeting with them to just talk about the business. You don't you're not doing any pitching or anything like that. You don't mention prices there uh, after you take notes on what they want. Uh, three, you follow up with a proposal. And I like going in. Uh, in person and talking about the proposal because there's big expensive prices on there and it would be bad to just email that over to them. Yeah. Um, after that, you just follow up with them uh, depending on whether or not they they sign or agree to the proposal right then and there. And this was like a, a $10,000 project. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that they were going to sign right then and there. I mean, you know, we're just two guys. We just came in there and saying, hey, give us 10 grand. You know, there was no way. So what uh, my strategy was with that was I painted them this grand picture of like, all right, you're going to have a really awesome website. You're going to have um, a fully automated email sequence and email campaign with professionally written copy that encourages uh, whatever it, the call to action is. Um, and you're going to have a professionally managed ad campaign and like, you know, good, um, lead magnets. You might have a squeeze page, so you're going to build up everything. And, uh, so I painted them this grand picture. I said, look, all this, it's going to be around 10 grand. And they're like, no, 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 we can't do this. But what I had in mind, which I knew they were going to do is they were going to default to the lower priced package, which was, um, $2,000 for, uh, building out the first or the campaign for the first 30 days and then $1,500 a month for managing it. And then um, they also wanted web design. So I made a deal with them where they didn't have to pay the full price of the web design up front. Mm -hmm. It would be like, you know, if we can get the money from the donations coming in, uh, in the first 60 days, just send over that initial money from the donations to pay for the rest of the web design. So it was, it was a little bit of a, um, 
I don't want to say um, like – what's the word I'm looking for? Like a bad deal on my end because we're still getting money up front, but it just wasn't like – you know, they're not paying for it 100% up front. So I was okay with that. It's, it's just um, something that I was willing to risk, but I'm confident in the quality of work that I deliver, and I knew that we would be able to get them results, so I had no problem uh, agreeing to that. Right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I like that. So, <clears throat> well, so did you kind of have like, you gave them three different pricing options or what did you do? Kind of present the, the largest one at first? Yeah, so there was like blocks of work on there. And actually I have, or actually, no, the one I have in my backpack is the um, half edited one. Let me go grab the uh, script that I had real quick. If you just give me okay. a second. Yeah, no, definitely. And yeah, thanks everyone else who, who just joined. It looks like a lot of Chase's fans are here. Thanks for joining, guys. Uh, make sure you guys leave this video a like. So for you guys who joined late, i um, talking with Roy uh, Goldstein about how he does door-to-door -door sales. So he kind of just started his agency recently. Um, and he's been doing some door-to-door, -door, got two new clients in the last, I think, two weeks. So he got one today and he got one about two weeks ago just going door-to-door. So we're kind of just talking about how he did it, like what his approach was, you know, how much time it took, what kind of issues came up. So um, kind of the object of this video is just to give everyone like a specific, realistic idea of how door to door and how sales works in general, like how much time it takes, what kind of objections, just because you're pretty much always going to get objections. There's always issues. So you kind of got to push through. Um, but yeah, and, and so everyone, who just joined if you guys have any questions about sales or marketing or whatever please uh drop those we'll try to answer those um but yeah roy you're back what do you get all right so this is the proposal uh if anyone needs help with their proposal go on uh i used panda doc for this but you can also use uh better proposals i know that that's a pretty uh popular one that people use and um so i made this on panda doc um the hardest part about making this proposal was uh, just making sure that all the copy was professional. So um, I actually got some help on that from a friend. Um, so the first page, and by the way, this is common for people when you go into proposals from what I've heard from some marketing veterans. Um, when you bring in something like this, as much time as you spend on the first uh, four or five pages, they don't read it. As soon as you put this in front of them, they skip over everything and they go straight to this page, which is the financial investment summary. All right. They just want to see the prices. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they don't give a crap about anything else. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this was basically how I broke it down. Um, there was video production and editing, which was for $3,000. And uh, this was actually someone that I had to hire to come in. Uh, one of my friends in Miami that has like a red camera. He's got tons of like really high tech, uh, like ad, ad, not ad gear, um, video gear, mm -hmm. the web design and landing page creation. That was uh, 2,500 bucks. The email marketing creation and implementation. So that was like setting up an automated sequence for them on active campaign. That was uh, $3,500 and they would get eight professionally written emails from uh, my friend Daniel, who's a professional copywriter, uh, danieldone.net if you need professional copywriting. And finally, it was the Google ad campaign set up for 2000 and a monthly ad campaign management service. So the two things that we ended up going with were the ad campaign setup and the web design uh, to completely rebuild their website. And so they left the video production and email marketing uh, for another time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess I didn't really like, you know, you were asking how I kind of broke down the the packages. I just gave them the, the most high ticket one up front. And then we just like um, cherry picked the services that they really needed off of there. So um, it was pretty good. All Overall, this took me about uh, four days to make. Um, there's There's more than just the financial investment summary. I put like the campaign implementation with the uh, timeline. I put, uh, oh nice, 
Hey, Robert. Robert Price just subscribed to my YouTube channel. I just got a notification. Thanks, Robert. Um, we I put a breakdown of the online plan. So I just talked about, um, you know, this is going to bring more awareness to their website, an increase in opt-ins, and finally an increase in the amount of donations. And, um, yeah, so just like marketing strategy, just a lot of good stuff. So you want to be as professional as possible when you go in with the proposal. Now, this was for a, a huge, like, nonprofit organization here in town for the uh, Blue Bamboo. He was just a guy running, like, a home and garden store. I didn't even put together a fancy proposal like this because it's just a $1,500 deal. I usually just send over an invoice for that. And uh, for invoicing software, I use um, I use um, Wave. It's, it's free. Um, and you guys... Okay can too it's i think it's wave.net or wave.com um for fun casino fun it's daniel doan.net d-a-n-i-e-l-d-o-a-n.net is there a way that i can comment on this yeah if you um yeah you can i mean you can either just open like the actual youtube video on another tab i don't know if i mean i can post here from from uh Oh yeah. Thing, but, okay. I but I think that's an important question too. I think um, from hundred percent organic SEO, you know, people don't give a crap about price proposals are often a waste of time. Um, so I, I have a few comments on that, but I think, you know, if you're just sending someone um, like a proposal out of the blue, like they don't even really know what your service is. And yeah, they're usually just going to ignore your proposal. Like just because you send a proposal doesn't mean you close a deal. Right. Even if it looks good. Oh yeah. So I want to know like how for you, how much of the content of the proposal did you actually discuss with them before you present the proposal? Right. Um, so do you mean like how much of the content within do we discuss in the first meeting? Like before I come back with the proposal? Yeah. Or I mean, just any time before you present the proposal, like mm -hmm. have you already covered a lot of the services you offer? Have you already talked about the pricing? Oh, they yeah, yeah, yeah. know what is in there? Yeah. So the pricing uh, we didn't talk about uh, just because I didn't want to say a number that I wasn't sure on. I think if, if you, if you're more established in your business and you, you actually like just understand what it's going to take, you could tell them upfront but um, typically you want to paint that picture beforehand. So I really focused on saying, look, this is your pain right now. You know, this is like common uh, copywriting formulas, point out a pain, agitate it, and then propose a solution. Yeah. So I said, you know, your pain point right now is you're not getting donations. Your um, Google ad grant is not being utilized to its maximum potential and uh, your website looks like crap. And then I agitated it by saying, you know, if you don't um, get your campaign running in the next 60 days, you're at risk of being suspended from uh, Google and they take the grant away completely. And then, you know, now you're going to have to spend thousands of dollars to get that same ad money. Yeah. And then the solution I proposed was, you know, uh, Jordan, which is uh, the person that I'm collaborating with on this project, he uh, manages ad campaigns for a living. So he's handling all the ad campaign uh, side of things and I'm handling all of the web design uh, side with um, like lead magnets, landing page creation and all that good stuff. So, you know, if you just go in there and you say, hey, you need ads, all right, it's uh, $10,000 or $2,000, you know, they're like, ah, you know, no thanks. But if they realize that you understand their pain points and you know how to solve it and you give them a good time frame, that's... Uh, it's a great way to close. Right. So we definitely covered, you know, circling back to the question, what did we cover before I presented the proposal? Um, you know, covered the pain points, covered the strategy of how we would do things. Um, didn't really get too much into like specifics. You know, I didn't say, hey, yeah, we build a landing page and then we monitor the conversion rate and then we move the buttons and this and that. Like we didn't talk about anything. It was just, this is what we do. This is what um, has been proven to work. And we monitor it on a daily basis, make sure that uh, the click through rates are good on the ads and um, you're going to get donations out of this. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, and then I went home and then obviously called up a couple friends. Uh, one of my friends that did the email marketing and the copywriting, 
my video production friend, and I kind of put together a whole team of people to really uh, take this $10,000 proposal and make it happen. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously I went back to them and because they're a nonprofit, they weren't ready to invest that much money. But um, uh, after going back to them a couple times, I finally convinced them to at least spend that initial um, $2,500 to get their website up and the initial ads going. Yeah, nice. Yeah, no, I, I think that's um, like going back to that comment earlier about, you know, the like if people only care about price. I mean, I think if you're sending over a proposal and you really haven't talked much with them, um, then, yeah, they're going to look at the price or they're just not going to look at it at all. Right. Like I only send the proposal after I've talked specifics about, you know, this is the service. This is what it looks like. And I get not totally giving the price. But obviously, if someone asks, I do want to say, oh, it you know, kind of depends. I'll have to come up with a proposal, but most of my clients spend like around this amount. Um, but you yeah, know, I, I, I think if you're sending a proposal and they're not fully expecting it, then yeah, proposals don't really work, right? Even if they look super nice, they're not, just because it's written out doesn't mean that's gonna totally convince someone. You actually have to have a real conversation with them beforehand. Um, and then also like about the pricing, if you're only selling on price, you know, that's just not good, right? Like if you had walked in there and and the person said, and you said, oh, we can you know, run your ad campaign and they say how much and you say, oh, $2,000. If that's the whole conversation, then obviously they're just gonna be like, oh, no thanks, right? Because right. you wanna sell it on value. You don't wanna be like the low cost. you know. So for website design, that's an example of, there's tons of agencies out there that just do the low cost web design, which is fine if you can sign up a lot of people. But you know, if you're going for those clients who are just gonna immediately ask, oh, how much? And then you say, oh, $300. Yeah, you might get some sales then, right? Because they're going to think, oh, that's pretty, you know, it's a pretty low price. I'll try it out. But if you actually want to be like a marketing agency or consultant that sells based on value and price, you want to start out with the value and then go to the price, not just, oh, yeah, it's, you know, this amount. Right. That alone is, you know, not going to be a good use of your your time and, and not convince prospects to sign up with you. Um, yeah, I think, well, so someone else commented, Roy, thank God you're not in the jacuzzi. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know when we were when we were in the jacuzzi, um, Chase was like, "Go live right now on the group," and I was like, "I don't want to," and he's like, "Do it," and I was like, "No, don't make me." And he was like, "You better do it." So uh, yeah, yeah, no, we're we're here in a more professional setting. Oh, okay, good. I'm I'm glad I missed that one. I guess I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, unless everyone wants us to do a live from the jacuzzi, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Comment if you you want to see that later, but that'll be an after hours. Yeah. The uh, thing I was going to ask you, Charlie, is, uh, you know, a lot of times people, especially business owners themselves, even though they are uh, in their, they are servicing customers in some way, a lot of them are still on that um, mentality of when you propose uh, a service to them, whether it's SEO or ads or web design, they they don't see the value in it. So they think that whatever the cost is, it's like, it's like a negative return for them. Yeah. Right. So it's like, Oh, well, you know, you're offering to rebuild my website for 2,500 bucks, but this guy said that he could do it for 300. So how do you typically respond to that? And, uh, like, what are some objections that you, you feel like you, um, break through as far as like, uh, price objections that people have? Yeah. Yeah. This is a common question too. And I think, well, so like what we talked about is I want to demonstrate the value first. So I want people to understand that, you know, like if I'm running an agency, I want them to understand we really know what we talk, what we're talking about when we do a campaign, it almost always has a positive ROI assuming, you know, like this is, this is how we run a campaign. This is how we make a profit for our clients, that kind of thing. Um, so I, you know, my, thing is that I want to overcome those objections before they happen, right? Because I think if you get to the point of like you have the meeting, you know, you make a proposal, whatever, you spend an hour or two or a couple hours talking to the prospect and then you get to the point and they're like, well, you know, I'm really not sure. It doesn't seem like it's worth it or I have a price objection. Uh, obviously, you can overcome it and there's strategies, but I think that's just way harder, right? So I want to put way more effort into the very beginning where I'm actually proving the value and making them think that I'm worth it not having to you know give them all this info and then at the end they're like yeah i don't think it's worth it obviously you can come back from that but yeah i think my main strategy is just 
like make make sure you're avoiding that from the beginning. Don't let it get to a point where you're at the very end, you're expecting them to sign up and they're still not convinced of the value. Um, and so I think there's strategies to, to get around that, right? Like showing more proof, showing case studies, giving them real specifics of what your strategy is going to be for them. Because that's another thing, right? Maybe your prospect just doesn't think it's going to be worth it because they don't have a solid idea of what they're actually getting. Um, so I'd make sure they have, you know, solid, specific idea of what's going to happen. Um, Do you use um, like a previous um, uh, previous data or like um, like case studies? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Like if you can, I would definitely do that. Right. Um, so yeah, two two parts of it, like case studies showing actual results. And then I also want to have our process broken down. So when someone's interested in, in buying whatever service it is, we can actually show them like, this is how it works. This is every, these are all the deliverables. Like this is the step-by-step -step of how we actually do it. This is like what the, maybe even a calendar, like, you know, in month one, this is what we're doing day one. But I mean, the overall goal is just to make sure they specifically understand what they're getting. Um, and then I think usually if you can do that well enough, like if you have good case studies, good testimonials, the price is often not the issue then, right? Because you always see, um, you know, people like companies that are well known or even like kind of influencer types, they don't have a problem selling higher price services because everyone already trusts them. Um, so you got to design your sales process, not to just contact people and say, oh, we do website design. Like we can help you, you know, we charge $2,000, right? You're not really going to get premium pricing without really showing the specifics of how you operate. Um, and yeah, I wanted to get to that other question. I think we missed one. Syed says you're a great man. Are you, I don't know if he's talking to you or me. <laughs> Both. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Not just one of us specifically. The other sucks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a good question. I wanted to, um, so why do we befriend the gatekeeper? Isn't that a waste of time as they aren't the decision maker? Plus, how do we get past the gatekeeper? I mean, so what are your thoughts on that whole thing? Like either getting past the gatekeeper or like, how, how do you deal with that? Or how would um, you like the gatekeeper being the person uh, like at the very front of the business? Yeah, I guess this is a little different from door to door. I think that's probably more applies to cold calling. But yeah, say you, you walk in, well, say you're call it like uh, door to door to a business that's like in an office. So mm -hmm. you have to, you know, show up at the receptionist desk and they ask, you know, what do you want? Right, right. How do you do that? Or if you're cold calling and someone else answers. Oh, yeah. There's the, the business. Uh, you know, I think what I've learned, even just from going out a handful of times is uh, you need to catch them when they're not busy. Because if they're busy, they've got stuff to do. If they're not busy, they they're literally just sitting ducks and when you have brick and mortar businesses oftentimes those people are not spending all their time on phone calls or doing services online so if you can uh go in and you see that they're busy i would say come back another time when they're not busy and then you know say hey is the the business owner here you know great like um you know a separate example of that was uh i went into a restaurant one time to get a job and I went in at like, um, you know, 11 in the morning, like before anybody was even there for lunch and the manager came out and like gave me an interview right then and there. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you go in when it's dinner, he's going to tell you, you know, screw off, come back later. You know, I'm, I'm busy as hell right now. So, uh, yeah, for, for brick and mortar, like in person, getting past the, the gatekeeper or whoever's at the front, you know, just come in when it's not busy, say, Hey, you know, um, I was wondering if the business owner is here and then you can, um, you know, I guess do one of two things is either one, just point out something wrong on their website or uh, two, um, you know, just go straight, straight into pretending to be a customer and then uh, kind of switching into that. Uh, by the way, I found something wrong with your website. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, kind of to, give my thoughts. I mean, I think like if, if you get a gatekeeper, right. I don't, I don't really like that when people talk about like, Oh, get past the gatekeeper. Like people always say <laughs> things like right. oh, trick them or like say, Oh, it's personal or whatever. I mean, the reason you defend the befriend the gatekeeper is like, they're part of making the decision too. If they think it's yeah. valuable, pass it off. If they think you're going to waste the person's time, you know, 
they're not going to let you through. So I, I think that's kind of a myth too, that people think the gatekeeper never lets anyone through. And that's not true. If like I've been let through before, where if I have a good pitch or it seems valuable or it seems important, I get passed through or they at least like do an email intro, something like that. So, I mean, I think part of it is you actually have to show the gatekeeper the value, then they'll pass you through. If you just try and trick them, yeah, maybe you'll get through, but then it's, you know, how does that look if you're trying to sell a business owner something and you trick the gatekeeper to, to be able to talk to the business owner? I just don't think that's like a good um, good strategy. And I think, yeah. hey, Justin, thanks for joining. Good stuff, Chase. What? Chase isn't on here. Yeah, all the credit. <laughs> well, actually, I think uh, I think Chase uh, sent out a, a Facebook blast um, telling everyone to come watch. So thanks for Got that, it. Chase. Yeah, no, I, I saw that, I think. Okay. Yeah, Beetle, I see where you're saying, Justin got, <laughs> but he's Beetle, not on here right now. Beetleboar said, uh, "Gatekeepers, the receptionist, etc." Um, by the way, a, a good point that um, I wanted to make too is, you know, a lot of times uh, you need to remember that you're just talking with humans, you know, and so, sometimes it's so easy to get very logical, very like, okay, how how do I? I need to get this deal, right? Like, how do I get this deal? But uh, something that Chase really uh, drilled into my head whenever I uh, went out and spent a week with him was you need to let go of the end result. Let go of the expectation that you have and just treat the interaction like a real interaction and really like try to just establish yourself and build some trust first. Because right. when someone trusts you, they're so much more willing to spend money with you and stick around for a long time as opposed to like – you know, you just going in there and you're like, Hey man, your website's broken. Value, value, value. Buy now, you know, like yeah. let people go at their own pace. That's why there's, um, CRM management, um, things where you can like have a deal in a pipeline and kind of keep track of it. It's because you want, you want to push them a little bit, but you don't want to like rush them and really just like miss out completely on that deal. Yeah, yeah no, that that's totally true. I think I mean, I get that question a lot. Like, how do you get past the gatekeeper? But yeah, at the end of the day, like they're human too. You know, you've got to actually show something valuable. I think a lot of people think there's some like magic phrase that lets you through. I mean, right. maybe it's really good at whatever you're like at, at sales or talking to people. Maybe there's like some phrase you can use, but you know, really like you just got to be confident in your pitch. You've got to make it concisely so that they at least know what you're talking about. I think that's a huge issue, at least with cold calling is like, people just take way too long to get to the point and the other person doesn't care. Right. They're not going right, to right. in five minutes on the phone to figure out what you're actually asking them. So you just got to get straight to the point. I mean, yeah, they're humans too. So if you build some trust also like calling several times, not just calling one time, hoping you can slip your way through <laughs> or something, like it's gotta be a consistent thing, right? Like, you know, call them every two days or whatever, you know, remind them it's important to get through. Like you have a specific idea for their marketing. I, I don't think there's really like a, a phrase or just some trick to getting through. Right. I mean, if there is one, it's just have a really good pitch and be confident in it. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, the thing too is I've noticed in a lot of your, um, um, videos, you also kind of, use the uh the, the pitch where you're like hey you know if i you know we've gotten results for this other so and so video editing company for example uh we specifically do marketing for video editing companies if i could get you five leads in the next month would you be interested right um so I, it's like what do you do when you don't have that kind of track record or when you're just trying to find your first client and you don't have like um I guess the yeah. empirical data to say, Hey, you know, like, can you do this? Do you offer like a money back guarantee that way there's no risk for them? I mean, what are some strategies that you recommend for maybe some people watching that are interested in doing this, but you know, they still need to get their first client. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I think you can still kind of use that approach. Like I like what you were saying about just start off small, like offer them something so you can, I don't, well, your deals weren't necessarily that small, but less than you might want to charge but you can start off with something small. Like if you honestly have a good product or service, you really, your big barrier is just getting them to try it, getting them to send over some money initially, try it out. But if you want to save a good service, it shouldn't be that hard, right? Cause you can kind of give them that first, like that, you know, we can do this, like we can generate five leads for you. 
I don't know, if you can do something like that, I would start with that. Maybe you don't have the track record, but if you're asking for something smaller, something, you know, and, and maybe start off with something free, right? So like a big part of what, so Chase, for example, like his is a good kind of funnel where he just starts off with a free audit, um, you know, like it's the, the shorter version, but people get a real taste of what he actually has to offer without actually having to, you know, send him money and then he can lead up to the next part. So I think starting off with either something free, starting off with something like that people can can try it, right? Because I think it's a lot more difficult if you're, you know, if, if you're trying to get someone to sign up for a $3,000 website, they read the back record, you can't really show them anything specific. That's just such an uphill battle to make that kind of sale. So, you know, I, I would yeah. start off with something free, start off with something cheaper. Um, I agree. Yeah. Okay, we got to let's do a couple of these questions. I think well, Jonathan said personally, if a prospect is solely focused on price and ignore the value proposed, then I will always quote the ceiling. Yeah, that sounds good. I think you know if if it's only focused on price, I mean, some prospects are just like that. Like all they care about is price. They don't, and in that case, you know, probably not a great prospect. Um, but also, you might, um, you know, you you might um, <clears throat> set that up yourself. Right, like you might make the mistake of quoting the price right away or only talking about price, like, oh, we do it cheaper than others. So yeah, I, I think you just have to avoid doing that. But yeah, you know, I agree with Jonathan there. Um, here's another good question for you, Roy. What are some other methods that can be used remotely besides Chase's audit? So I'm assuming mm -hmm. like in getting people kind of just take that first step with you. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, so D Chapeau, if let, let me know what kind of like services you offer. I guess it's um, more specific depending on, on what your offer is. Like if it's SEO, um, you know, you could do mm, maybe like, um, hmm. Yeah. So let's see if, if it was SEO, I mean, you know, you could look at maybe like an existing sites. Uh, okay. So, Organic SEO and authority audits. Uh, if you have hrefs, um, you can do like um, like a printout for them and just let them know like their rankings. Uh, if they if if you want, you can uh, see if they'll give you access to their Google Analytics and Search Console, and then you can like just go through there and and try to show them, hey, you know, if we were to fix up these pages, you could double your traffic. Um, SEO is kind of hard. You really have to like educate um, your client on what SEO is because SEO already has such a bad reputation uh, because there's so many people that are like, yeah, 300 bucks a month, I'll give you SEO. You know, everyone knows that's total bull crap because there's no one on this planet that's willing to spend the time to do real SEO for $300 a month. So, um, you know, I would say with SEO and the authority audits is um, case studies are your best friend. Um, if you don't want to do like the checklist, which some people just don't care because, you know, they're, they're, um, they're business owners. They don't have time to go through a checklist with like 75 things. They just want to know what it does. So, uh, what I would say is like, get one solid case study. I mean, I'm working with a Shopify store now, a hundred percent free just for the sake of getting a case study. And the reason why is because everyone has to start somewhere. Um, you know, once I get one or two good case studies on Shopify, I feel more confident saying, Hey, listen, this is going to cost X amount of dollars for me to do this. And the reason why is because look, I got these results with someone else. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that would be a little bit harder for me to tell you right now, like what are some other methods to use remotely? Um, but the best thing I can re recommend is niche down into something. So if you're doing um, dental SEO, if you're doing, um, uh, I don't know, like kitchen remodeling SEO, just try and focus on one niche, get results in that niche, and then you can go to other businesses in that niche and show them the results that you got for someone else in another city or town or country or whatever it is. Um, also, if you have case studies with NDAs, that's totally fine. You can literally just show all of the um, stats without revealing the business name. Um, I have another friend that does the same thing and he just, you know, 
puts uh, redacted wherever it says the business name. And, uh, you know, people have to understand that people's privacy is, is valued in your business. So yeah. um, anyways, uh, there's a question for you. Uh, Charlie, do you think that um, natu- that you naturally spend too long on the phone when cold calling? I'm interested in this too because I feel like I can get stuck talking to someone for like three hours and then my day just goes out the window. Yeah. No, I I mean totally. There are calls like that, right, where you – I've done that and especially with prospects that are just like bad prospects where, you know, they don't really have the money or whatever and there's a reason mm-hmm. that they – We'll just spend forever on the phone with you. So there's those certain people that are kind of just waiting for someone to call and they talk to forever. Um, well, I guess I've had good and bad, right? Like, cause I've had ones that were like that. We just got really into the conversation and then it was a deal right after cause they were just really excited about it, whatever. But yeah, I think typically when you're cold calling, there will be those people that are just talk to you forever. And if it's not really going anywhere, you know, I just try to end the call, like set a clear next step. I mean, yeah. on every cold call, I want to actually set a real next step. Like, you know, I'm going to send you this, watch this. If you're still interested, let's have a strategy call or whatever it is. So yeah, I like to keep it to less than five minutes because I also want, like, I think some people, their strategy is like, you know, stretch out the call, whatever it is, but, and I will, if they're super interested, like if they really are into the conversation and I think they're a good prospect, I'll just do the discovery call right then and there. But, you know, a lot of people are just, they're uncomfortable talking to strangers and I get that. So I want to, you know, get right to the point, leave a positive first impression, ask a few qualifying questions, but I want to quickly end the call. Like, cause I, I can kind of notice that like if I have a good three minutes of the call, like I get the intro in, ask them a couple questions. I can tell them that people get uncomfortable. Like, okay, can we just end this? Like, you know, it sounds good, but you know, we don't need to have then like a minute wrap up. So I'll just pretty much like, I have my way of then ending the call. So I don't keep them too long. They don't feel like, Oh God, he, you know, that went too long, right? It felt uncomfortable for the last couple of minutes because we had nothing to talk about or whatever, but he kept us, you know. So I like to just say, okay, you know, that sounds great. I'm going to get you this video. I'm going to send this video over and a free strategy or something. And then let's schedule a discovery call. And so right. they say, yeah, great. Like, I'll wait for that email, you know? So yeah, I think, I, and I don't know for the question, I don't know if they're asking like, as a cold caller, do you spend too much time or does the prospect spend too much time? But yeah, that definitely happens. So I think you just got to have your checklist of what hap- what should happen during a call, like your pitch, what you tell them, what questions you ask, and then set the next step. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's definitely true. Like, and people, I think cold callers try to do that sometimes too. Like they just spend way too much time either talking to a prospect that's not a real buyer, just because it's easy, right? It's making cold yeah. calls painful. So sometimes it's just easier to spend 30 minutes talking to someone and you can just say, oh yeah, I was working, I was you know, talking to a prospect, but yeah, there's, you know, like, and, uh, have you done cold calling for like SEO services before? Yeah, I have. And actually, well, one thing I wanted to mention is, is usually, I mean, I try to avoid doing it for SEO. Like I think, especially if you sell SEO, it is just such a hard thing to sell right off the bat. So we do try with any client I've had, we just try to sell something else to start out. Um, so we, you know, we try to, I think selling the audit is a better way to go about it rather than just trying to sell them like, Hey, you know, this is my SEO service. It takes six months to really start working. So we either try to sell something else. Like we'll just start with pay-per-click management or something like that. Um, But no, I've done it. So I do think cold calling for SEO, it is extremely tough just because it's not, it's such a hard service to sell cold because it's a long time to to start or working. It's just, yeah, see, it's very right. hard to convince people and they, they don't see that initial return on, on investment and they, they just see this huge price tag and the it's, it is hard. I think really with SEO, it's better to get inbound leads or like white label for someone that, that trusts you. Right. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think if you start with something else, then you can sell your SEO service to them. Like I, I, I mean, obviously people do it, but I do think it is kind of a race to the bottom, right? Like there's all those low cost providers who are like, okay, we'll do it for $250 a month. And that's fine. A lot of businesses are on that kind of service, but it's just such a hard thing to really. So like what you were saying at the beginning of this was that the guy you met with, he didn't really give, like he did not care at all about anything technical. So he probably didn't really understand much of what you were saying about SEO. And obviously that's good then to just like, you know, and the conversation, the conversation, like pivot. It's like, right, 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 right. You don't want to like, be like, 
oh, you don't care about this? Well, all right, let me just move on to the next section here. You know, he's going to be like, all right, leave. Like if you, if you, and, and you have to be sharp when you're talking to people because you got to like read their facial expressions. You got to read their tone. That's why I feel like it's a little bit harder on the phone. Cause you don't, you can't see the person. You don't know how they're feeling, but when you're in person, you know, you start talking to them, they like pull their phone out. You're like, all right, well listen. And you know, you gotta like, you gotta be on top of it. Yeah. 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 That's totally true. Um, yeah. I mean, so like if possible, I wouldn't start with SEO. I'd start with something else. Um, obviously like, yeah, try to get white label partnerships or whatever, connect with agencies that offer or specialize in other things. Um, yeah, it's always tough. Like when I've done it, when I've done cold calling for SEO agencies, what we do is we just try to offer some type of audit. Like, Hey, we, you know, we specialize in helping landscaping companies or whatever. We found a couple potential opportunities for you. Like I, we want to put together this audit that shows you what, what can be improved. And so and if they're open to it, then we'll ask a couple questions to kind of figure out like yeah. if they would actually invest in it. And then we'll put together like a, a, a video audit or we'll put together like a, I think the video audit usually works best, but you yeah. can send a PDF. And you uh, know, the word audit too, it's like, it, it's such a turnoff. They're like, ooh, an audit. What is this? Like the IRS coming to knock on my door. So they're like, yeah, no thanks. But if you kind of like, if you phrase it, you're like, hey, you know, and especially if you've niched down and you've gotten results for someone, like uh, I know a guy, uh, I don't want to like say his name or his niche, but he, uh, he just does like um, these like 10 minute audit videos for uh, the business that he goes after. And he says yeah. he has like great success with converting these people into clients because he shows them the process. He shows them their existing rankings. He shows them what they do. And then like from there, um, you know, they uh, are, are more willing to do it because he's very transparent about it. So, uh, with cold calling, like someone recommended to me, you know, there's a, a website that lists 400,000 Shopify stores, like all the registered Shopify stores. And they're like, Hey, you know what you should do? You should make like a 10 minute audit video, do like 20 a day and like send them out to, uh, all these Shopify stores. But the thing is, is like, you know, 95% of those audits are just like never going to get looked at. And you're, it's just a waste of time. Yeah. So it's better to have some kind of pre-process just to ask them if they're interested and then like at least you have some val validation of like okay this this one might be better at like a better potential for me to do um an audit video but i wouldn't even say like audit i would say hey we got results for blah 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 business um you know we can do it for you C can we send over like a free video just showing you how we're gonna do it and then they're like yeah. uh okay you know Whereas if you're like, yeah, I've got this SEO audit and we do all this like good stuff. They're like, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally right. Yeah, no, I've heard of that strategy too. Like, but I just think that's a waste of time if you're going to make the audit before you even talk to them. Cause like, yeah. say you're doing cold email in that case, 50% of people from the beginning, like you wait, 50% of them are never even going to like, they're not going to open the email. So, and you know how many, right. and, I, and I've also heard with, uh, with emails, it's like if your if your uh, open rates go down, your deliverability rate also goes down the tank as well. So you're actually risking like ruining your your email address if you keep getting marked as spam. Yeah. So yeah, totally. you know, w w with like these high ticket services, Charlie, it's it's very important to like build relationships with people because I'll I'll be honest with you, um, the people that I build relationships with that are in business, they send me more referrals and leads than any kind of like, you know, uh, coal or like, I'm trying to phrase this right. Like the amount of effort that I do with cold calling versus just building relationships with other business owners and getting in touch with their, um, with their, uh, networks is way more valuable than just like reaching out to people and being like, Hey, I don't know you, you don't know me by my service. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I guess for uh, if you're just starting out and you don't really have a whole lot of like clientele or a lot of case studies, I would say focus on building relationships mm -hmm. and you'll get like referrals and other people sending you um, uh, 
potential work. You can even white label for someone. So you don't have to put yourself out there without a whole lot of case studies. You're actually under someone else's reputation, which can help out and get some money in the door. Um, and then, you know, once you start getting results in a certain niche, that's when cold calling and stuff gets way easier because now you have proven results and they're like, all right, well, this guy has results. I mean, especially if you offer them like some sort of money back guarantee or like, uh, you know, that they don't have to pay the whole thing up front. I mean, each one of those things just drives up your conversion rates like massively. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Like, yeah, no, I, I think like if you're doing cold outreach and you just are just starting out, like obviously you have to start somewhere, but it's just so much harder when you, like, even when you get someone interested and this has been, I mean, I experienced this when I first started out, it was so frustrating. Like, you know, you do cold outreach, you do cold emails, you finally get someone interested and then it's like, yeah, they don't really care because you don't really have anything to show them. It's super frustrating. So I think with cold outreach or whatever, that's, it's so much easier when you're just accelerating what already works. Like if you already have something, like you already have these case studies, you already have a solid client base and then you just expand that. It's, you can oh, do yeah. a lot more than just, you know, saying, well, you can do a lot more when you're just cold reaching out to people, you have no idea what you're offering or like they don't really get it. So yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And that's like what I'm trying to do with my channel is, you know, I, I want to build this strong base, like have all these videos. And I, I do have a message that resonates with people like decently well, right? So then I can kind of use this to build up. So instead of cold, you know, doing cold outreach and saying, hey, I can help you with sales, like, you know, let's do a project. I can just say, hey, you know, I help companies with sales. Here's a video of me doing a call or me doing a strategy. They can watch the video and that's an easier way for them to get acquainted with me rather than me like trying to push them into doing a meeting or something. Right. It's like they're coming to you. They can already like see that you're doing this stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's that's like it, it's almost like marketing is is a lot more simple than people think it is. And really it's just like, you have to produce content on a consistent basis. You need to be on multiple like social platforms. And the more people see your face, the more they're like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. I trust him. And if they need someone to generate leads for them, who are they going to go with? The guy that cold called them or the guy that they've been following on YouTube for the last month. So, uh, you know, definitely don't limit your, um, your prospecting to just cold calling. You want to try and publish articles on LinkedIn, on a blog, on YouTube, Facebook groups, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, make sure that you're publishing content everywhere. Right. Yeah. And I, I mean, I would think the biggest part of it, like the hardest part is probably actually figuring out what the messaging is. Cause I, I can see how that's frustrating for people. Like when, you know, if we say, Oh, publish content everywhere. I think what some people then end up doing is like, they'll just write an article on LinkedIn about why SEO is important or whatever. But in general, people don't really care. What, right? Like you can write a thousand articles like that, that just oh, much yeah. in SEO or whatever, and you probably won't get anywhere. So I think the toughest part is figuring out like what actually resonates with people. Mm -hmm. But then once you have that messaging, then you can use all these techniques. Like, you know, you can use cold calling, cold email, all this stuff to just blast the message out there. If you already know that like a thousand other people liked a certain video or whatever, then all you have to do is just target other people, send them the video. And that just accelerates building your brand rather than, you know, trying to, we're trying to either like get them interested in content that they don't care about, or just trying to cold call with nothing behind it. But yeah, no, I think it's super important to actually be building a brand, then using cold outreach to get people on board with that brand rather than like just cold calling, trying to see if they, if you can set a meeting right there. Cause I think that's such a big mistake of cold outreach too, is like when you cold call someone, they're not quite interested or whatever, but you're not doing anything else to kind of get them interested in who you are, or keep in touch with them, right? Like people are just, it's kind of a wasted effort. If you cold call a hundred people, maybe like three of them were interested in a meeting, but what about like the 20 or 30 other people that maybe you talked to briefly are not interested now, but will be interested at some point. You kind right, of- Like you need to follow up. Yeah, there's got to be some other way, right? Because they're not going to remember you, right? Like if, if you cold call someone, give them the pitch real quick and they're like, oh, you know, I'll reach out when we need your service or whatever. If that's they're not going to they're never going to remember who you are in three right. days, totally forget they even had that conversation. So there's got to be something more where at least like you add them on LinkedIn, they can see a little bit more about, I mean, they can see like who you are, they can see your picture, they can see like whatever their content you put out and kind of get a better sense of who you are. Because I think if you're just doing the cold call and like, you're expecting to make all the sales just using that. That's obviously a lot tougher. So, and you yeah. can follow up with them. 
What's that? You can follow up with them. Like you can call them back in like a week or two, right? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, sorry. That's not right. That, um, obviously if you just do cold calling, like that can still work, but it's gotta be more than like one call. Right. Just, I think right, a lot right. of people do that where they like start a campaign, they'll call a hundred people and then they pretty much never try to do anything with that list again. Mm -hmm. um, it's gotta be something better than that. Yeah. I think you can keep calling, like call every few days until you actually get some sort of meaningful conversation with them. Uh, but yeah, it's gotta be more than just like one time calling and thinking that they'll remember who you are or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me see. Did we miss any questions here? I think um, I also have a question for you, um, and I, I want to share a story with uh, everyone watching right now. I actually um, I lost a uh, oh man, what was it? I lost a two thousand or twenty five hundred dollar deal um, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and this is because of uh, red flags that people look for when they don't know you. And so I, I wanted to find out some of the common red flags that people look for uh, when you call them and how you address them. And uh, I just want to share what happened with me. Uh, I was referred by a friend um, on Facebook, uh, a guy that needed a website redesigned. Mm -hmm. And so I put together a whole proposal for him. We talked on the phone for like an hour and a half, two hours about what he wanted. And he was like, all right, great. I need you to send me, uh, like email me over a list of other websites you've built. I was like, okay, no problem. So I emailed him a list of, uh, maybe like six of the most recent websites I built and not even 10 minutes later, he's like, Hey, um, uh, my wife found something on your website. Uh, there's like a bunch of bad copy or something like that. Like, you know, thanks, but no thanks basically. Yeah. And so I was like, like, what are you talking about? So I called him back and he's like, yeah, like there's a page on your website and it's like, it's got like default, like lorem ipsum and all this crap. And I was like, no way. So I go on my website and I see that there's this page and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, how long has this been on my website for? <laughs> and so I was like, no way. So I, I re like, I tried to save the deal. I tried to, you know, <laughs> like offer him a discount, honestly, but yeah. it was just like, it was just done. And so I was like, damn, like really like when people have no idea who you are, they are looking for every reason not to trust you. And this guy or his wife went on my website and they're like, okay, this is a nice website. Oh, we found a page that has an error in it done. Like we don't want to work with you. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you're established, you have results, they're like, Hey man, like, did you know that, you know, you've got this, uh, you know, like weird page on your site and they're like, all right, send the proposal over anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that one just like, it killed me. It, it just, it absolutely killed me. And, um, I, I've talked to other, uh, marketers and they say, you know, it's common, it's going to happen. You're going to do things like that. So I wasn't, um, too upset over it. The best thing I did was I just fixed it right away. But you know, I just wanted, I, I just want to know some things that people have pointed out to you where they're like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. I got you, you know, like, see you later. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think, yeah, that's a good point. I think for web design, that's pretty common. I mean, I talked about this in my last video. There's, there's one thing, not necessarily that I've done, but like, maybe I've done it, but like inconsistencies with your first message. So I think obviously when you first reach out to someone, it's super delicate, like they're gonna go on first impression. And if something's off about it, they're just gonna be like, okay, no way. So like what I've seen, I, I got this LinkedIn message the other day and it was like, hey, you know, we help companies generate leads. Like we helped, I forget if they said the company or not, but they said, hey, we helped this company generate like $35 million in new business last year, whatever, and kind of described it. And then at the end, they're like, you know, we're offering like the first, you know, we have a special, like your first month, $250 or whatever. And their pricing was like $350 a month regularly. But then I was kind of like, well, you know, that makes no sense. Like, okay, you generate $35 million in leads for business. That sounds great. Like you guys are awesome at it if that's true. So why the hell are you, you know, trying to get clients at 250 a month or whatever? It just didn't really add up. So I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. And maybe I've done that or whatever, but yeah, I think there's a few others. Like, I think if I send a video and people just don't like the kind of strategy I use, I've definitely gotten that. Like, if I send an example of a cold call, I've gotten 
people responding back like, oh, way too aggressive. Like, I don't, that style will never work or something like that. Yeah. Which is fine. And I think there's so many different styles of sales too. Like I, I hate when people act like, oh, there's, you know, a lot of people on YouTube do that too. Like, uh, oh, you know, this is how you have to do it. Like, that's not true at all. There's so many different ways to do sales. It's just, you have to stick yeah. to your own style. So yeah. that's fine if people don't like it, because obviously it's not going to please everyone. Um, oh yeah, so you should do the Lorem Ipsum challenge. Just say you're doing a rank for Lorem Ipsum challenge. Nice, okay. What is that? Who's who's Kyle Roof and why did he do the Lorem Ipsum challenge? Yeah, I was honestly, like when that happened, um, the funny thing is, as soon as I fixed that page, literally the next day and the day after that and the day after that, I got three leads coming in on my website from YouTube. So I feel like everyone in the last like month that that page was on my site literally saw that page and was just like immediately turned off. So after I fixed it, I actually started getting some leads coming in through my site and I was like, geez, that is, that is insane. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely like have someone go through your site and, uh, just like try and break as much as they can. And, uh, right. Doran yeah. mentioned earlier, uh, he said that he got into my website somehow. <laughs> so I gave him my phone number. So we're going to, we're going to see what that's all about. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good one. I mean, that's another one too. Like I've seen a lot of marketing agencies that then have a site. It's like, you know, some part of it is broken, like the contact form. Right. It doesn't work or something like that. So, I mean, that's obviously, I don't know. I've probably done that too. Actually, I feel like in the early days I would have, what was it? There was one issue I had where like, yeah, the contact form didn't work or went to a different email that I didn't like check or something. It was just like, you know, sales, whatever, instead of my actual email. So there's contact forms I missed or whatever. So yeah, obviously that's a bad one, especially if you're selling like marketing or sales services, you've got to be on top of that stuff. Cause yeah, yeah. what does it say? It's like for me, if I, got back to someone like five days after they sent the contact request that obviously looks horrible and it's yeah i would preach you know get on it right away like you should be responding within an hour or two um, right. okay so kyle roof is the guy that does challenges for lore mips and he's the only guy to rank number one for this and click here he's a legend google that and then what they go to his site and <laughs> what does he just have like ads on it <laughs> right 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 yeah oh have the elegant theme graphic on the site that yeah you know uh, surprisingly um uh illustrations and stock photos are so expensive uh so there's a good website that i like going on called iStock, and yeah. uh yeah so i i need to uh, allocate about 500 dollars to get some some uh stock illustrations for my site yeah um stock demo Use your logo. Yeah, we'll you know we'll we'll talk after this. We don't we don't need to trash my website right now. <laughs> There's probably some things wrong on it, but um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, what I was saying with you know these red flags is like exactly that. You know, if if uh, people go on your site and they see something wrong and you're trying to sell them like a three thousand dollar package, they're like, man, you can't even get your own stuff right. You know, why should I go with you? So you want to uh, definitely make sure you've got all that stuff. Uh, going oh yeah no worries d um i know i know that uh there's probably some stuff on there so i appreciate it 100 percent. i'm i always like constructive criticism i never i never take it with disrespect yeah. what here this is a good question for you i think um i do not know how i can incorporate seo with my web design and let me while you do that i'm gonna get, grab some water real quick you answer that question i'll be right back absolutely um so the thing with uh, web design is you want content on your site. You want a lot of words. You want a lot of like H1, H2 tags, and you want it to be strategic. So um, depending on what your um, uh, website is all about, Kareem, you can do some keyword research on like hrefs um, to figure out like some uh, low competition keywords that you can kind of sprinkle in. There's also uh, a website called uh, something with uh, LSI keywords, um, latent semantic keywords. Those are like long tail. Uh, it's called LSI graph. Here I'll post a uh, I'll post a link in the comments right now. You can go on that website and uh, type in like, for example, if I type in. Um, 
land or let's see here video editing right so if we put like video editing and it searches through the database it'll pop up um, you know video editing software for PC professional video editing software free download um, you know this might not be like the best example but just go on there put in like your main keyword uh, for whatever it is that your websites all about and you'll get uh, some keywords that you can use and then you want to make sure that there's like you know at least two to three thousand words of content on your home page I would say more than 500 words on all of your other pages and then um, you can use uh, like internal linking to pass um, link equity throughout your site so if you're getting a lot of like backlinks to your home page and you know you're linking to your service pages your service pages have a much higher uh, chance of ranking. Um, so, if you, uh, so I think the question was if you want to incorpor incorporate SEO with web design. I, I think I read it as with your website. If you want to incorporate SEO with web design, really just emphasize the um, the copy that you use on the website. So, if you're building someone a website, say, hey, you know, you're getting this great website, but you only have 200 words on your home page. Let's um, increase this to like 1500 or 2000 words. So that would help them rank. Um, there's a lot to SEO. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. It's not, it's not the easiest just to incorporate it. Obviously if you're doing it on WordPress, you can um, install the Yoast plugin and kind of choose focus keywords. Make sure you're doing your meta titles and meta descriptions that's pretty, probably like the easiest way to do SEO and just the most basic is just download um, the Yoast plugin and uh, you know make sure that you've got like green, re the green uh, dot you'll see Yoast gives you like a rating of red, yellow, or green. Make sure that you have good readability and um, good SEO. And uh, if you can do that, I mean, you've covered most of the basics for like on-page SEO. It gets a little bit more technical, but Again, if you're a web design service provider, uh, you know SEO is not your your main thing. You could just kind of say, "Hey, um, something that separates us from everybody else is we kind of give you good SEO uh, up front, or like good basic SEO." So you know you you make sure that all of the uh, boxes are checked on uh, the Yoast plugin. Yeah, I don't know if you covered this, um, but you can also like what we were talking about is just having those. Uh like referral partners too. Like if you just specialize in one, I think that's usually a better message, especially if you're just a one person mm -hmm. agency or whatever, like, oh, we really only specialize in this. I think that's, you know, kind of disingenuous to say like, oh, we offer like these nine totally different services and I just do it myself. So if you have referral partners that can usually, you know, I think it's way better if you really focus in, like, you know, we, we do exactly like these are the types of companies we work with. This is the one or two services that we are really good at. And that can sometimes like get people even more interested almost if you're more exclusive and then you can just have some sort of referral partnership. Like if you have a CEO agency that you just refer them to yeah, some sort of deal where they just give you like 20% of the first month or whatever deal they, they strike with them. And uh, you can usually charge a higher ticket whenever you're very like niche down. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, if I niche down into Shopify SEO audits exclusively, I mean, you know, it, let's say the site is like uh under a hundred pages, you know, I could charge a thousand bucks. If it's over a thousand pages, I could charge two, three, even four thousand dollars for an SEO audit. And now, you know, you're known as the Shopify SEO audit guy, or you know, just a very, very specific service, and you get very good at that one thing. So if you can get really good at just that one thing, you know, now you're dominating a niche that there's probably like three or four other people in. So anytime a store needs SEO, which in e-commerce, a lot of people are interested in organic traffic because it's very hard for them to get uh, positive ROIs on their um, ads, especially if they have like low ticket items. Yeah. Um, and you know, that, that's a whole other discussion for another day, uh, whether you should sell low or high ticket items. But, um, the other question that we got here is uh, how do you price your services? That's a good question. And the way I, I do it personally is I aim for a target hourly rate, which I try to go closer for like 150 to $200 an hour. 
And then I kind of say, all right, you know, if this person needs um, their Shopify site rebuilt and they have 10 pages and that's going to take me, um, you know, 10 hours or whatever it is. And I'd say, all right, it's going to be around 1500 to $2,000 um, to rebuild that Shopify store doing everything that I do. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of like how I like to do it. Uh, you don't need to tell people your hourly service. You can be more like a uh, project based pricing, but, um, if you need, um, help pricing your services, that's what I do is just go for an hourly rate. If you're starting out, you know, you could aim for 50 bucks an hour that way. Um, you know, you're still getting a decent uh, hourly price, but you're also, you know, if you spend time looking up things and things like that, um, you know, it kind of helps justify your price. But once you get really good at something and you can knock it out really quick, definitely up your price to uh, help you out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you can either do it like hourly or you can do it project and just kind of have like a profit margin. I mm -hmm. think that's more if you're like, if you outsource more of it and it's not really your time, but you're just, you know, paying for other things and just pretty much figure out how much it costs. And then, you know, you obviously want to have at least a 50% gross profit margin usually. So, and I don't yeah. know, factor in your time, because obviously, like, if you're setting up the project, you're going to spend at least a couple hours, like, you know, hiring people or communicating with them what to do. But yeah, I think it's either like, if you're mostly doing it, set an hourly rate. If you're outsourcing most of it, or most of it's just like the cost of, of what are, you know, cost to deliver it, then just do a profit margin, at least probably 50%. You want to be grossing at least 50% of what the project actually costs. Um, I think those are the main two. I guess you can. Yeah, I mean, I have a copywriting friend that does copywriting, and uh, I read a great book called um, Breakthrough Advertising that talked about uh, back in the 60s, there were uh, direct mailer copywriters where they would send out um, these mailers to like 300,000 people in America, and they would make millions of dollars off campaign. And so these guys would write like three to five hundred dollars of or not three to five hundred dollars. They would write three to five hundred words on this mailer, send it out to two hundred thousand people, and they'd make millions of dollars. So, you know, at that point, it's not even like an hourly thing. It's just, hey, I know this works. I know how much money it makes, and it's like all just value based. So, yeah. when you can sell value, that's when you like your time is completely just separated from what it is you're selling, um, which is it takes a while to get there, but especially in something like copywriting where if there's um, a site that's getting 10,000 visitors a month to their sales page and they have a 5% or a 1% conversion rate and you can get up, get it up to 5% with copywriting, you know, you could charge whatever you want. So that's a good point. That's probably you eventually want to be no matter what kind of service it is you want to be. Yeah. You know, just to the point no. where you're like, yeah, you know, I charge five hundred dollars an hour, or whatever it comes out to in the end, because really, it's not, it's not about the hourly pricing. It's about, it's about the value that you're delivering. And yeah, uh, exactly. An interesting thing too is when you do B two B sales, a lot of times you're selling real value. So um, what I mean by that is there's perceived value and there's real value. And perceived value is like when you buy a Louis Vuitton bag. Louis Vuitton has such powerful branding that they can sell a purse that probably cost them $100 to make, probably less, like $50 to $60, and they can sell it for $2,000. And why is that? Because they built this brand, they built this perceived value of luxury, and it's not real. It's it's like it's hard to explain, but when you're um, a B2B agency and you build a, a website for someone that actually converts well, or you build an ad campaign with good copy and, and you say, Hey, you're spending $2,000, but you're going to be making $5,000 month after month after month, you know, you're selling real value to people. So there's a huge difference when you're selling perceived value and real value. And you, you need to understand that when you're figuring out what your service is. Um, when I do SEO and people are like, ah, you know, I don't know about spending 500 or a thousand bucks on an SEO audit. Well, I tell them, you know, listen, what are your sales now from the traffic that you're generating? Okay. Well, it's, it's X amount of dollars. Okay. So if we do this audit and we're able to double your organic traffic in the next three months, your sales would double. 
how much money would that bring in in the next six months? Oh, well, you know, 10, 15, $20,000. Okay. So if you spent $3,000 on this service, would it make it worth it? Then they're like, okay, yeah, now I understand. So you, you got to explain to people that they're not buying a Louis Vuitton purse from you where it's perceived value. You're not, you're not selling them a thousand fake followers on Twitter for a thousand dollars. You're selling them something that's going to help them make money. So a lot of times, um, people need to understand that you're selling them like real value and not just like some phony service. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. I think especially with like marketing and sales, you want to approach it from the perspective of like, this is going to be a game changing thing for your business. We really want to help you grow. I don't, you know, personally, I wouldn't want to be selling a service where it's just like, oh yeah, it's $500. It'll help you a little bit. Like it, when you're selling it like that, where it's like, okay, this will be a marginal benefit, like, you know, 500 bucks, we'll do a little bit. It'll kind of help you. Like, I don't want to be doing that. I'd rather sell something for several thousand dollars. That's going to have a real impact. Like they're going to love it. They're going to be totally fine spending several thousand dollars because it's going to be worth it. And I can then afford to put in more effort rather than just selling like this little thing where, you know, I'm either over promising and like, um, you know, going to have to put in a ton of effort to make it worth it for them or they're just going to get a little bit out of it. Right. I'd rather, if, especially if you're marketing or sales consulting, like you want to quickly work your way up to the point where you're really taking on like clients that you'll work well with. So you like, you don't want to just be taking on some tiny business that has no budget, like does not right. have to scale. Right. Like you'd rather be working with a business already doing fairly well and then help them do a lot better. Right. So oh, yeah. I, that's another yeah. big mistake. Like people spend too much time with prospects that just, you know, if, if you're just selling like a cookie cutter thing and you're trying to sell it to a bunch of people and you don't really have to do much, then yeah, sell it to any business. But like, if you really only want to have a few different clients, like you got to be going for serious companies that, you know, and they don't necessarily have to be big companies, right? But they, you know, something where you can actually make a substantial impact, they can pay you a decent amount. So, and that's another thing I think would be interesting to hear your thoughts on. Like, do you think that for your agency, for the direction of yours, do you feel like you'll just, you won't have just a few clients, you want it to be like a larger agency type thing where you have, you know, a couple hundred clients and yeah. like a team fulfill the work. First of all, I just want to do a thank Beetlebore for subscribing. I just got a notification on, on Streamlabs. So thank you for that. And um, in response to that, um, Man, I've done web design, I've done graphic design, and clients can just become a total pain in the neck sometimes. I mean, you know, whether – because a lot of times they don't really understand the things you're doing, so you need to, like, constantly be communicating. And as a agency owner, uh, if you're doing all the work yourself and all your time is being spent on that, a lot of people underestimate the time that you spend with your clients just explaining to them the things that go on. Cause you need to talk to them on a weekly basis. I mean, if they're spending thousands of dollars with you a month, they want to know what the heck's going on. So, you know, if you have 10 clients um, and you, you know, you have to do an hour long meeting with them every week, you know, that's 10 hours a week that you're putting into just meeting with uh, the clients and trying to go over things with them. So it's a huge like waste of time sometimes. Uh, especially if, if they're like spending 500 bucks or a thousand bucks a month with you. So with my agency, personally, I would love to just have a couple big paying clients that we're doing SEO for, uh, whether it's like a five to, or I would say like a three to $5,000 a month package, um, where we're doing their SEO every month. Um, that would be ideal. If I, if I get more clients in, I can expand my team. Uh, that's what I would personally like to do is just kind of like reinvest all the profit that I make into scaling up and actually becoming a very like reputable brand. Um, because at the end of the day, if if you start taking on a lot of these like clients where you're already butting heads before you guys even sign up, it's just a recipe for disaster. And um, you know, you don't want, you don't want to deal with a client that's going to end up leaving you a bad review early on in your agency. You want every transaction to be like fluid. I mean, I'm, I'm the type of person where if someone doesn't enjoy what we're doing or if they feel like they didn't get the value that I promised, I'll just give them their money back instead of getting like a bad review because bad reviews are like, it's literally like, uh, you know, you might as well just be out of lives in a video game. 
uh, once you get a, a ton of bad reviews or even one, it could really hurt your reputation. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think, I mean, I do think like in the agency world, there's so many, um, well, I think for people that are like just starting out, um, it's important to also remember that so often like these engagements don't work out super well. Like obviously you don't want to completely over promise and leave them pissed off. But like it, at the same time, it's not the end of the world. If someone's a li like dissatisfied with your service, it happens all yeah. the time. But yeah, obviously you want to avoid like, you don't want to over promise, like charge way too much and then not really deliver anything. Then that's a recipe for getting bad reviews. But you know, I think it's also important to keep in mind that there's always like sales and marketing. It's, it's hard to do. And I think, a lot of times there will be dissatisfied customers that shouldn't necessarily like dissuade you from really trying to build your agency, but you've got to be realistic about like what you're promising people. That's also why it's super important to kind of niche down. I mean, I think because when you really have a handle on exactly what you're selling, who you're selling it to, that's much better than like, you know, say being a one man show and offering every digital marketing service and selling it to every type of business you possibly can. That's like, I think that's a recipe for disaster. It's much better. It is because you're not niche down. Everybody's going after them. You know, if, if you go up to someone, you're like, hey, I do this exclusively for chiropractors, like, or I do this exclusively for plumbers. They're like, hmm, all right. You know, this isn't like the 95 other guys that called me today saying, hey, like, I'll do your marketing. This guy is like specifically niche down in this. And then, you know, as you grow, when you get, a couple employees and they're handling all the plumbing stuff, you know, you can say, all right, now I want to do um, SEO for solar companies or something like that. So you can definitely pivot your direction after a couple months, but just to start, just to get your feet wet, just pick something um, preferably high ticket. Like if you're doing um, like um, window tinting, you know, you're doing SEO for like window tinting companies, you know, their average customers like two to 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they might not justify the value of spending 2000 a month, but if you can do it for plumbers or uh, someone that has a service that goes 24 hours a day, they're much more interested because the jobs are much higher priced. Second, they're open 24 hours. So the lead window is much bigger. Um, and, you know, there's more money to be made uh, with someone like that. So, you know, one of the things that um, you just got to, you just got to pick something. I mean, don't spend too much time on it. Just pick something and start. Otherwise you're just going to be going in circles, but yeah. yeah, you need to have some patience when you're starting your agency too. Like Charlie, what, what, uh, besides like cold calling for other businesses, um, what kind of services do you offer? Yeah. So I offer, um, basically like the strategy, um, coaching, that kind of stuff. I mean, the thing that I've tried to focus more on is, is kind of helping companies set up the strategy and like helping them set up a full sales process. Cause I, I'm kind of moving away from just doing the cold calling. Cause kind of what I found was, is basically just like a short term fix, right? Like you can cold call, but you really have to have someone who's dedicated to the business doing it. So it just didn't work like having me do it for several different companies at once um, or putting someone in place who like didn't really know the product, whatever. So I've kind of tried to go more towards like, okay, let's set up the whole strategy. Like, you know, number one, let's kind of examine where your sales process is at, where, you know, what the opportunities are. Um, and then I'll kind of recommend like, okay, this is what I think we should start with. Like, you know, and, and I try to start with something a little smaller too, right? Instead of saying, okay, yeah, I'll totally do sales for you, like for a thousand dollars or $2,000. I just start with something smaller so people can try it out. Like, hey, $400, I'll just put together a strategy and we'll do a one hour call where I kind of give my recommendations. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to kind of move towards that where I'm, if I'm consulting with a company, I'm really like helping them build out a real sales process, not just fix that bandaid of like, oh, we need to generate a few leads this week. Um, right. So yeah, I, I kind of used to do that where like we generate leads or whatever, but it, what I'm really more interested in is actually helping companies build like a real sales process, like put cold email in place, get a real cold calling approach, put people in place who can actually do the cold calling rather than like me doing it sometimes, me hiring someone to do it or whatever. Um, but yeah, basically training, coaching, list building is another big one. So like, for example, let's say you, um, consult with a company, you put together a strategy for them and then you say, all right, you guys aren't doing any like email list building, whatever. Do you actually 
do the um, copywriting for the emails yourself? I mean, what, how does the implementation look like after you propose the strategy? Um, yeah, no, I, I do help with that. So we'll help. So basically we want to like use Lemlist or Mailshake or something like that to actually, so the emails will be automated, but yeah, I help with the strategy. So I have definitely a few good templates that have worked. So I kind of work with them, like figure out, you know, what their brand or what their unique selling points are. And then I help actually put together the strategy. Um, do so you yeah. build the sequence on Mailshake yourself? Uh, yeah, I do. So yeah, right now, like it's kind of just, um, me and a few other people. So yeah, I, I usually do it or I like, we'll have my VA maybe do the technical aspects, like, you know, set up the, the email inbox in Lem list, that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm like, I mean, so that's what I try to focus on is doing the strategy for companies. Um, but I just want to make sure that it's not like up to me to then execute it day after day. Cause it's not realistic that I'm going to be doing sales for several companies. So I really enjoy that, like setting up the strategy, figuring out if we should use cold email, if we should use cold calling, if we should use LinkedIn and figuring out what the initial message should be. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, people usually like when I do that obviously with them. So I either am doing that for companies or if they're just buying like a coaching session, I'll just get on the phone and kind of talk to them about it. But I don't yeah. know if that's like how granular do you get with, I mean, do you say, all right, so for the email, we're going to be doing like six emails and we're going to be doing, you know, uh, the first email is going to be the welcome. The second is going to be informational. And by the sixth one, you have some call to action. Like, do you really like, uh, get, like I said, like very granular with the strategy and actually put together, um, like a package that you have your team, um, implement on, or do you kind of say, all right, well, I put together the strategy for you guys. Now you can go and find someone who's going to implement this. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, so I do both kind of, so if it's a smaller company, like obviously they can't pay as much. So like they can't pay to have me fully implement it and help manage it. So yeah, sometimes it's like, so I kind of have two different types of customers, like the lower ones, who it's just like they're just starting out or they, you know, maybe have a small business and they haven't really done any outbound. So I'll just put together the strategy. Like, you know, these are the tools we should use. This is how you set it up. This is the messaging. And then I just give it to them. And usually they don't hire someone else to implement it. They'll just do it themselves. Right. It's like the founder that has the time. Yeah. I just help out with the strategy. Um, but yeah, then there's the second type of customer where it's like, they're a, not a big company, but you know, maybe they're like 20 employees. They don't really have a real outbound strategy. So then they pay me to help implement it and, and make sure like the cold emails are going. Um, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the idea. And I think that's something I've struggled with too, is like, you know, I don't want to be like part of these people's sales teams necessarily. Right. If I want to have multiple clients, I can't really be the one like right. doing or calls for them or doing cold calls or something like that. So I've tried to step back and more just focus on the strategy. Like this is all the things you need, you know, we'll help implement them or I'll help um, come up with a strategy and you guys implement them. So I've, I've tried to move away from us specifically doing it for companies, just because like you said, it, it kind of ends up being this thing where, you know, it's almost like we're working full time for them, right? We always have to have right. calls. We always have to do planning. We always have to like be talking to their customers and know their product. Um, but yeah, so I think, and that's something I've, I've definitely been working on is like, what is the exact approach? Like, what am I trying to offer? Um, so yeah, and, and I think if you're, if you're doing like a consulting service where it's, you're actually doing marketing or sales for them, it's really important that number one, you're taking on a client that you can actually help, but you also don't want to be, well, I guess it depends. But for me personally, like, I don't want to be taking on a client where I'm expected to do like the entire sales process and we're kind of starting from zero, right? Like they don't have anything going for them. They have a few clients, but they don't really have, right, right, right. They don't really have anything going. And then I need to come in and like, you know, I, I try to avoid that, right? Like I'd rather work with a company that already is doing a few things well, and then I can just add this other, yeah, like they're already doing cold calling or they already have a ton of inbound leads, but then I can add cold emailing for them and charge way more. Mm -hmm. And it's not so stressful, right? Because it's not like, oh, shit, we need this to work or else. You know? Right. And you don't have to do the whole thing where you're like, all right, this is why you should get this. They're like, ah, it's a lot of money. They're like, all right, listen, like we've got money coming in. We want more. Like, let's just do it already. Like, just get it done. 
I've gone the same exact thing with some leads through my YouTube channel, which is to be expected. But you know, a, a few people have contacted me that uh, have drop shipping stores. Yeah. And the thing with a lot of these drop shippers is, you know, there's so many people on YouTube now that are like, buy my drop shipping course, do drop shipping. You know, you're going to be a millionaire next week if you just run one Facebook ad. And everyone's like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to pick some like random product and do it. And so they contact me, they want my free SEO audit. And then I usually prospect them a little bit before I kind of spend a lot of time or even do the audit to begin with. And I say, all right, well, you know, if we do the audit, like what's your marketing budget? What, what is your budget for content? What is your budget for even advertising? You know, I don't do advertising, but I just want to know or uh, for conversion rate optimization. They're like, well, I don't have a budget. So, yeah. you know, how, how are you supposed to make money? So those are the people that I would rather like not work with. And I've actually been like thinking, you know, is it worth my time to just offer them like a low ticket uh, offer just to actually have them buy something like, you know, if their uh, copy is terrible or if their homepage is really off, like maybe I can just fix it up a little bit for 500 bucks. But, you know, sometimes it, it's just not worth the hassle of working with someone with a low budget because, yeah. you know, it, they've already told you that they, they don't really have a budget. And if they don't have it, then it's like, why are you going to waste uh, your time talking to someone for hours on end when, you know, their lifetime value is like 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. So, uh, I mean, obviously if you're just starting out like myself, I, I would prefer to just bring them in as a client and do whatever work I can. But, um, you know, if you're like, uh, in your shoes where you've, you've got like, um, an established business already, then sometimes it's just not worth it to work with those small, smaller clients. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think a really good model for like the YouTube, um, type people like us is just, you know, obviously put out a lot of value and then kind of have your lower ticket. Well, I guess the idea is usually like have three different tiers. Like you have your full service thing. Like when you actually go in you you do SEO for a company, you do website design, whatever. And that's like your highest price thing. Maybe you charge $3,000 a month. They have to be really qualified. And then beyond that, you're not going to do anything where you, you have to get super involved with them. So maybe your middle thing is just like, I don't know, like a course where it's four or 500 bucks and it's everything the person, you know, someone needs to know about Shopify SEO or whatever it is. And then you maybe even have a lower version. Like you just have, you know, the shorter version of the course or just like an ebook for, I don't know, anything between like, 20 and a hundred bucks or even like yeah. a coaching session, something like that where you can sell it. Yeah. It's a little bit of work, but it's very defined. Like you make, you know, 50 bucks for a 30 minute coaching session. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a good, really good kind of approach. And that's what I'm trying to move towards also, like just have a few clients where, you know, they're paying me really well. I can really put effort into doing it, you know, hire someone like a VA to do a little bit of the work, like more of the, the manual, just like, whatever, data entry, list building, that kind of thing, I can really put the effort into helping them. And then I can also make money off of just like helping smaller businesses, but I don't have to be super involved, right? I can- Like with a course, you mean? Yeah, it could be. A, I mean, I don't currently offer one. I do have a store where it's just like, I have a couple eBooks, that's my lowest price thing, where it's like 29 bucks. It's just a, um, so I have two of those. It's like a hundred scripts for selling SEO. So it's like 30 or 40 pages, just a bunch of scripts. Have I've you been getting, getting have you been getting sales on those? Yeah, I have. I mean, not a ton, right? So it's like a couple people a week will buy that. Um, and then like this, I have one about a, designing a sales process. And then there's like the middle ones where, you know, I'll charge $400 to set up like basically the whole strategy, like, you know, and then I'll do a call with them. So that's why I charge um, a decent amount for it because I have to do a call, figure out what their strategy is then work on a strategy for them. So it'll, the end product is like a five or six page PDF where I just outline like, this is what you guys need to do. Like you need to set up Lemlist. You need to have a VA who builds a list for you. This is how they should do it. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's like my middle thing, right? Where it takes me a couple hours. I don't have to get super involved, but I can still give them the value. I can give them some of the info that I know. And, and then I have like the higher thing where you know, I have people contact me through the site. If it's a company I feel like I can help, then I send a proposal. It'll be like $3,000 a month. You know, we'll help you with this and that. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good approach for this kind of thing. Um, and do you have like a landing page for that or a webinar? Like, do you do any advertising for that kind of service? 
Yeah, no, that's a good question. Cause I, that's the thing I'm, I'm working on right now. Like not really, you know, I, I mean, I have my website and that's pretty much it, but the problem with it is it more just is focused towards those high end clients. So I do get a lot of people coming through the site who are like, you know, I want you to do prospecting for us. But then I look and it's like, yeah, I probably can't really help them that much or they can't afford it or whatever. Uh, so I am working on that a little more like having a different like landing page or whatever for selling the other types of things. Yeah. And then I just have the shop page, right? So I'll mention it in videos or I'll put it in the, in the description and people will click it and check it out. But no, I don't really have like different landing pages for it. So that's something I'm still kind of working on, like how to best. Yeah. Like, do you have yeah. analytics installed? And like, do you see like, your, uh, do you have analytics installed and you can see like your conversion rates on those uh, PDFs? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. So I have analytics. I mean, I, even now I don't get like a ton of visitors. I can look real quick at like what the numbers are recently, but I have, you know, it's something like, let me look real quick. You know, it's something between like 20 and 50 visitors a day. So it's really not even that many. Yeah. And I'm not really doing anything besides just putting videos out. So I think, you know, obviously that's something I'm looking into is like, how can I, instead of right. just, instead of like you know, having this page with a bunch of different products on it, like number one, I should probably have different landing pages for each service. And it doesn't really need to be complicated. And it probably shouldn't because you confuse people. But like just the landing page saying like, you know, this is the coaching service a five minute video of me explaining what it is and then a link to purchase. Yeah. I, I think like, uh, I've kind of been trying to balance my, uh, stuff as well too, because like, I feel like we get so caught up with YouTube and like kind of working that we forget about our own websites when really it's like, you know, a lot of time should be spent there. Yeah. Um, by the way, I just wanted to answer Kareem's question real quick. Uh, he asked me, who did the design and copywriting on my website? Uh, I actually designed my website and did all the copy and I had my friend Daniel Doan um, advise me on the copy. So he actually helped me with a lot of it. So uh, if you're interested in that, you can um, uh, send Daniel a message. I just put his, his link in the comments. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd be interested in what would happen, you know, if we did a little SEO research on your website and like some of the keywords that that you hit on with uh, the PDFs that you're selling and see if we could do some SEO on those. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah, we should do another video where we talk maybe like a strategy for one of my services or whatever, because I definitely want to, obviously, I want to have make more money from just like the more passive things like, well, what I was going to say is like the list building, that's a really good service too that I want to sell more of because you know people always like it like I have a pretty good process for building lists um and it's not a super high price thing so it's it's pretty easy for people to say okay I'll give it a try like a you know a list of 100 prospects for like 50 bucks I'll try it out oh, um, do you sell you sell the prospects or you just teach them how to build the list no so I yeah one of my services is the list building so well like they tell us what kind of um like what businesses they want, what locations, what types of, you know, what size companies, and then we'll, we'll build a list for them. So yeah. I have my team of, of guys in India that both, so they'll do it for the clients we work with. And then if people just buy one off list, they'll do it as well. So that's a really good service. Like I like selling that people always like it and we have a pretty good process for getting accurate data. Yeah. So we should do like a video of, you know, do how should I sell more of that? Do you use like um, D7 Lead Finder and like LinkedIn and all those websites to kind of like put together a list like that? Yeah, we do. So yeah, so we use all the automated tools, but the thing is the other aspect of it is we're not just automating it. Cause what I found is like, it's really, it's really cool that there's so many automated things like D7 Lead Finder, but at the same time, it's like a lot of the data ends up becoming, like some of it's weird, right? Or if you use an, a database like, uh, zoom info or lead 411 it's great because they have so much data and it's super cheap but then what you find is when you actually start emailing or calling like half the emails aren't valid because it's just old data like they put that in their database a year or you know, five years ago and the person moved on so right. what we do we'll start with that that'll be like the baseline and then we'll actually verify the emails they'll do manual research to fill in the stuff that we actually missed so that's why it ends up becoming like pretty accurate. We're not just automating it. We're automating and then cleaning it up and then doing manual research to figure out because some people's emails like you can't find automatically. It's just not out there. But what we can do is like if someone goes in and manually 
figures out, okay, what's the company's email format, then they can figure it out and then verify it. Um, right, right. Yeah, we should do another video like that where you, like we design a landing page or something and figure out how to actually sell that more so than just, totally. right now what I do is it's on my shop, not really many orders from there. It's more like if someone contacts me, I might just suggest it to them like, oh, you know, I can, we can build this for you if that's what you're really looking for. So maybe we should do a, a, a video where we design like a landing page. Oh, so, absolutely. I mean, I was talking about this with Chase too. It's, uh, you know, he, he was like, oh yeah, you know, I just build my landing pages like super quick. I don't really do a whole lot of testing and he still manages to sell like a ton of courses. But, you know, imagine if you took the time to really like optimize it and use like a video um, tracking software. If you did like a pre-recorded webinar, see where the drop off points were. I mean, you can get so like, you know, specific with things and really optimize the copy, optimize the uh, flow of the page and, you know, even run ads if you really yeah. got to a, a point of um, high conversions. But yeah, we should. Uh, I'd be interested to uh, see that. I also wanted to just touch on having those deliverables that are like quick. Like yeah. if you're making 30 bucks off a sale on a PDF, like why would you not want to sell more of that? You know, there's literally a, like nothing that you have to do there. It's a digital product. You're selling 30 bucks. And if you're selling a couple of week, I mean, you know, you need to get that to like a couple of day. And uh, yeah, you know, there's definitely like tons of things that you could do um, to do that. So. Right. I mean, the nice part about it is like when people buy it, they like it. Like I've had plenty of good reviews off of it or people then contact me and be like, oh, I like the scripts. Like now I want to buy this other, you know, I want to buy your higher price service. So yeah. And do you have like call to actions within your PDF document to like say, hey, you know, if you enjoyed this, you should and you need some help, like check it out, uh, check out my service. Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, I, so. The only thing at the very end, I do say, like, if you have more questions, like here's my email. Mm. So yeah, kind of, but not necessarily like here's the next product to buy. Yeah. You got to pitch them hard on that. Really get them up the value ladder. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I, I've kind of, you know, I've just done it. I haven't really put any good effort into it. Cause I think I do know that if people buy it, like if they find me on YouTube, then they buy it. They're still going to be following me without me doing a lot. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm missing a lot of opportunities too. If I'm not actively like, you know, this is the next thing or retargeting people or whatever. Um, yeah, I think that'd be a, a, a great video to do as well. Like, and and that's a, a video I I wanted to uh, work on is like, hey, you know, I offer, and I think the list building would be a really good thing. Like, I was working on this video already, where you know, okay, I kind of offer this service, but not really. Like, it's just an afterthought. How can I turn it into a real business or like a real thing that makes solid money? So that'd be good to do with you. Like, let's put up this landing page. Let's make a good video. How do we promote it? How do we actually get orders and fulfill them? And, you know, in two or three months, like, can we actually make it a business where we're making, you know, X amount? Oh, definitely. I mean, with the uh, strategy sessions that you've done and the implementations that you've done, do you have um, like real empirical data that shows, Hey, after implementing the sales strategy, our sales and leads went up like X amount of percentage or so-and-so? Yeah. So I do have some case studies. I wouldn't say like I have the wide range of like, you know, from all our clients, we have this and that's kind of hard to get sometimes, but I do have like solid examples of, you know, we work with this client, like we did this amount of emails or whatever. They got this amount of leads, this amount of appointments, this amount of sales. So I do have a few of those too. Do you have I, those on your website right now? Um, yeah, I do actually. Yeah. If you go on there, there's, um, is it, uh, it's lead logic. No, no prospectdame.com. Oh, prospect game. Yeah. So if you go, where is that? Oh, you know what? Yeah, we actually might have taken that off. For, that's a good question. I do know I have them, but I forget if on this version I don't have them. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically, like, uh, I have two, I think, like, you know, and I named the company specifically and I said, you know, this is exactly what we did. Like we had. Yeah. But I don't know. That'd be a good thing to look at before we. Uh, yeah. You know, like I'm just seeing right here. I think a great um, improvement that we could do is like, so for example, if you click into uh, the lot, like list of 500 prospects, right? Um, we've got like, you know, we'll create a custom list of prospects for your business to contact. And then there's like two more sentences after that. Uh, and that's it. You know, imagine if we actually fl like really like 
outline the entire strategy, put in a video on there of you talking, um, you know, your conversion rate would like go through the roof if we got some reviews on there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all about really like creating uh, sales pages on, on these individual products. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I, you said that you get a couple sales a week from the eBooks. Uh, what about like the more higher ticket ones? Like how, how are your sales on that? Uh, let me look at all the ones I have on there. Cause I would say the, I mean, the most popular one is probably just the, the 30 minute strategy session. Um, so yeah, that's maybe like two a week, I would say. Gotcha. Yeah. And so usually I get good reviews from those as well. So I, I know that's something that usually people end up liking. Um, let's see. And I would say, yeah, the, the strategy session, like the, the $250 one where it also comes with scripts and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that was not as popular. Um, that's probably the least popular one on here actually, just because I don't know, for whatever reason, well, it's the most expensive, I guess, but the, the live cold calling session. Oh no, sorry. The live cold calling session is decently popular. Like actually I only added that a month ago, but I probably sold like three or four of them. Gotcha. And then I have the one below that, that I don't think I've, I sold like one ever. So that one's not <laughs> popular like this, the custom call email, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, so for the live cold calling session, book an hour long live cold calling session. Okay, so you're like teaching them how to do it? Yeah, exactly. Or do you do an hour long cold calling session where you actually cold call for their business? Oh, well, it's kind of both. So like most of it will be strategy, like kind of talking through, but then I'll actually make a few for them. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's super helpful to have like a full hour of it, but basically I'll just help simplify it for them. That's really all I do is just like simplify it, right? Like you just got to have one line you tell people, then qualifying questions, then a clear next step. So that's yeah. basically what I do. And then I just show, I'll do a few calls just to, and maybe they're not super successful, but I'll just show them like, you know, it, it does, don't overthink it. Like you were saying earlier, a lot of your clients maybe think it, just overthink things. So I just got to remind people, like, it's not that hard. You just got to make it very simple because if it's too complicated, the other person will hang up on you. So, right. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, you know, I think the last thing I really want to just uh, say is like, when you have an SEO agency, really like understand what you're selling and really understand like every single part of it. Because um, <laughs> it's actually funny because recently, you know, I didn't even think I would get this far when I started like making my YouTube channel and getting people calling me and things like that. Like I had a guy call me the other day and he had a huge Shopify store and he was like, yeah, you know, I really just want someone to do SEO on it. And he had like seven or 8,000 products. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is like a potential like $50,000 project if he really wants like SEO on everything. So yeah. I didn't even know like where to start. I, I called Chase. I was like, Hey man, like you, you got to help me on this. You know, this is like, this is, I think this one's out of my league right now, at least to do it myself. You know, you'd have to put together a whole team of people for that. But, um, you know, I quickly realized with that lead is that I need to have not only, um, a strategy for closing small clients, like three to $5,000, but, you know, potentially 15 to 20,000 plus dollar clients. Yeah. So um, that's something that I've been working on uh, every day is like just trying to put together like a plan. So when someone calls me and they have a huge store, I have like a go-to strategy, whether that be white labeling, a bigger agency that can handle that kind of workload or uh, doing something else. But yeah. 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 Probably. Just, uh, you know, I don't know, like if you've ever had a huge company come to you and you, you're just so overwhelmed that you just don't even know where to start. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I have. And I think, well, one challenge with that, too, that I've had is like then it ends up becoming very custom and it's like almost like I was working for them. Right, right. Which is fine if that's what you want to do. I think it's it's definitely difficult if you're starting out and you do get a like a big company who, you know, they see like, oh, this this guy seems pretty good or whatever. And then they approach you and I have had that where, but then they kind of just want me to work for them, which is okay. And I have done that for a while. Like I ha did have a company that I worked with for a while that was like a, 
so the CEO just found me and he, they have like 400 employees or something. And he found me and was like, you know, we talked for a while and then he wanted me to work for them. And that was fine. Cause I just, you know, wanted to make money from it. I didn't really care, but you got to, that can be tough if you're really trying to start a business and they just want you to like, you know, basically be full time for them. Right. They're basically hiring you. Yeah. And which is totally fine. I think that's kind of BS when people are like, Oh, don't, you don't want to be an employee or whatever, but if you can get yeah. a better deal being an employee and you don't have to worry about all the stuff about owning a business, that's better deal for a lot of people. So I don't think that's necessarily bad, but you just got to be clear on what you're actually focusing on. Like, are you really like in your case, if you, all you really want is like three or four clients that pay like five grand a month, in some ways you kind of are working for them, right? You're kind of going to be on like at their whim. Like if they want to do a call at this time on this day, you kind of have to do it. But I think that's fine if that's what you're going for. Like if you, then you're making 15 or 20 grand a month. Yeah. You have to kind of work with them. It's not like you run some business where you don't have to do any of the actual work. Like you just got to be clear on, on really what the mission is. So if you are trying to build something where you have a hundred clients and most of the process is automated, then yeah, you do have to say no. To certain things or whatever but yeah and you know like for me really the goal is like all right right now i'm kind of like an agency mode where i would like to hire a couple people where if someone hires me for you know if i if i have four clients paying me 20 grand a month i would like to hire a team that i can pay you know five to ten thousand dollars and they handle all the work for me and then you know i can focus on a building up more clients or B, just uh, doing something else. But, you know, you can always pivot too. Like I would love to create some courses in the future based off of my results and success and kind of teach other people how to do it. And then, you know, you can obviously scale up uh, educational courses a lot larger than you can, uh, a lot larger and easier than it would be for a full agency. Yeah. But, um, you know, and then I don't know, maybe eventually run my own Shopify brand or store or something like that. So, you never know where you're going to pivot. The The thing is you just want like a cash flow business right now. You know, we're both still young. So as long as we're just bringing in money and like keep stacking bread and chips and whatever else you want to call it, you can always pivot into something else in the future. But, um, you know, you need a cash flow business to start and then you can focus on investing later on. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I, I think that's a huge mistake some people make. And I did that for a while too, is like, I was always thinking, okay, I just want to build a massive business and which is good. But at the same time, if you're just starting out, like, and you still need to worry about making money each month, it's kind of hard to do that. It's kind of hard to oh yeah, simultaneously have like, okay, I need to make three or four grand this month so I can survive. And I'm trying to build like a multi-million dollar company. It's like, you got to take care of that first part first. So I think it's totally fine if you're just doing this client work, this client mm -hmm. work for a while, like even if, and we're both pretty young too. So like, even if we did that for the next 10 years, we'd still be like relatively young anyway. So, you know, Oh yeah. I think people are sometimes too anxious about like, oh, I'm going to start this. Like it's got to be a huge company in the next few months or I'm quitting on it. Right. <laughs> That's probably not a good mentality. You I gotta, mean, there's yeah. thousands of people that have literally like done that where they just start, they build a website, they make a couple YouTube videos or blog posts and they're like, this didn't get me results. I didn't, I didn't make a hundred grand yet. Like I'm done. And really yeah. you, you just, you have to like keep persevering, keep going because like right when you're ready to fail, right when you feel like, Oh man, like I've, I've done everything I can. It's not working. That's usually a good sign from like the universe that if you just keep going, you're going to hit that lucky break. So right. yeah, yeah, I kind of thought of that when I was, well, when I was first starting out, I'd always change up or whatever. And I kind of thought back, like if I had really, if I had just picked one of those things, like stuck with it for a solid two years, yeah, not like try to change a bunch of it or whatever. I, it honestly, I think almost anything, if you really stick with it, like put in the legitimate effort, not just try to bullshit people or like try those little tricks to get clients. If you really stick with it for two years, no matter what kind of business it is, you'll do, I think, pretty well at, at minimum. Yeah. I mean, I, hour, hours in, hours out whatever you practice, you get good at, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think, um, God, we've been dwindling. I think people got tired of the two hour. Yeah. yeah we had it. <laughs> uh, well, let's see real quick. I think we got you like, you're up to, I think you gained like 12 subscribers. Oh, really? How come, it, how come it doesn't uh, give me notifications sometimes? Yeah. So some, most people, it doesn't. So it's only like if their channel is public. Oh, you know, really? So I can't even see the list of most of my subscribers because most people set to private or whatever. So it doesn't tell me who they are. Oh, wow. 
doesn't tell anyone else. But yeah, so it's only like, I get emails every once in a while, but it's only like one out of every five, maybe you get an email for. Hmm. If someone subscribes and they have a private account, it's, you know, you're not going to get an email because it's, they don't say their name. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's only people who like have an actual channel. So if they've made videos or if they wanted to make their account public, but by default, most accounts are just private because it's just people who watch who never. Got it. Yeah. Videos. I'm trying to hit a hundred so I can uh, name my channel. So whenever I'm sharing my link on like uh, LinkedIn, it doesn't have that really long, like ugly URL. Yeah, I know. You know, I can't, so mine, I do have one like youtube.com slash C slash Charlie light mm -hmm. or for whatever. I mean, I, and I still share that. That's fine. But it's weird. Cause whenever I go to like my channel, it, it also shows me that long, ugly link. I don't know if I can change that. Cause I, you know, I mean, I, as long as that directs it to your channel, I, I think you'd be okay. Yeah, that one works, right? And even if you click that, then it'll still show that at the top. Like it doesn't change it. So I, I, yeah, I think I'm doing it right then. But hmm. you know, who knows? But yeah, you can. Yeah, I think. Um, well, you'll get there pretty soon. Actually, Jimmy was kind of in a similar boat because I think he had like 50 when we did our interview like two months ago. What's he at now? Let's see. 153 so nice what is a what does jimmy do um so he does um social media marketing so yeah uh, he, he mostly talks i think he mostly talks about the sales actually like how he gets clients so we talked a lot about like how he would go door to door to restaurants in new york um that's what we talked about on the video we made together at least you know an interesting thing too that maybe we can do this for another day obviously i don't want to keep this going too long but um Social signals are huge in SEO right now. Like I worked with this client on Shopify and we basically just optimized their uh, pages for like good keywords. And he was sending so many like social signals to the site that we ranked for like 500 new keywords. We brought in like $1,500 in sales, like organically from like zero. And then on the 26th of January, that was like his last trade show. And he's really just like took time off to like hang out with his family and not really went hard on uh, Instagram and like his rankings just went all the way back down to what they were before. So I I'm going to need to have a little discussion with, um, uh, what's his name? Chase about this Oh Chase, okay. because Chase hates backlinks, but, um, <laughs> you know, backlinks are a great way to, uh, get rankings and stuff Yeah, I, from, from what I've been seeing. So I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to tussle it out with him and, and see what conclusion we come to. Especially yeah. uh, Ruan, Ruan Marino. He's a huge proponent of backlinks and Chase doesn't like them. So, Yeah, I think – well, I don't want to speak for him, but I feel like his – it's more like he doesn't like the – well, when people say, oh, build backlinks, then they just fucking get like spam backlinks. That <laughs> yeah. Shit, and I agree. That is worthless. But if you actually right. – yeah, if you have like a YouTube channel that's blowing up and people are linking to it or whatever, that can't hurt you. You know, that's – Oh, of hurt. course. But you know, even if you if you took the time to do real link building, where like you reach out to relevant uh, blogs in your niche and you like do a guest post or something like that, right there is extremely valuable. You yeah, know? on podcasts, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, that. it's the same thing that we're doing now. It's like you know, we're we're just um, we're like networking, but you're doing it in text form on another blog and getting a link. So um, you know, I don't know. I, I definitely want to do more with Shopify. Uh, link building uh, just because I I see that if, if someone doesn't have their social media going 100% um, doing some real link building can help too but yeah social signals are huge right now yeah okay I think that's kind of a clarifying thing he thinks Chase thinks great content builds its own links and that's probably true to an extent so I I don't yeah I don't think Chase thinks like backlinks are totally worthless. I think he's more saying that it's not a good use of time to try and build them or whatever. Yeah. Which I kind of, I can get behind kind of. So is Chase, is Chase on here right now? I, I don't think so. Cause I think he went live a little while ago. Oh so, yeah. I mean, but, but the thing is too, is like, okay, for example, great content builds its own links, but is that like, do you need to tell people about it? Because we posted, uh, you know, the owner of this Shopify store I'm working with, he knows a ton about his industry and he wrote some really like, he wrote like two really good articles. Uh, and it takes like a while for them to rank. 
So I feel like you act, you have to get like the ball rolling a little bit. So you might not have to spend so much time that people do on link building, but you got to at least like, you know, post it on Pinterest, post it on some forums, like just do a little bit of it. Um, especially if you're like very small, you know? Yeah. Right. But, right. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I, I don't know. Live. I'll talk I, about that with Chase. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get him. Well, I don't know. We'll, <laughs> I think he debates that a lot, but yeah, maybe you should get on with him some other time and debate him, like figure out exactly where he thinks, where he draws the line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, Doran, I'll, I'll message you after the stream. We'll, we could talk a little bit more about SEO as well. Um, let me check you out as well. Um, yeah, Charlie, anyways, I don't want to, I don't want to keep this stream going too much longer. I think we've, uh, talked about plenty. So, uh, thanks for having me. And, uh, we got some good, good stuff today and yeah. uh, we'll do this again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for everyone that, that stayed through to the end. I know that was a long one. So we'll definitely make another video and we'll, we'll have a different focus or whatever for the next one. But yeah, thanks so much for being on. Yeah. And, uh, let's get those, um, product pages fixed up for you. Definitely. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Yeah. Perfect. I'll, I'll message you about that and we can plan like how we want to do that and how, if we want to make videos or whatever about it. Sounds good. All right, everyone. And, uh, just quick plug. If anyone is interested in uh, Shopify SEO and just general, uh, Shopify marketing, go ahead and check out my channel, uh, subscribe, turn notifications on. I try to go live or make a video every other day. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to message me uh, by email or on Facebook, Roy Goldstein, or on YouTube, however you want, LinkedIn, uh, pretty easy to get in contact with me. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thanks, guys. Everyone that's still here, make sure you guys give this video a like. Um, and yeah, uh, we'll see you next time. Tru Truth Seeker 1961 said link, um, link for, oh, okay. At least you're talking about your channel. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Is that what he asked for or some other link? Um, let's see. I think, yeah, maybe that one. Well, either way, there's a link to your channel. So yeah, check that out guys. Give him a subscribe as well. And yeah. Oh, for your channel. Yeah. That's the link. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye guys.